When did you have the moment, I made it, I did it. Hi everyone and welcome to She Made It, where we celebrate female entrepreneurs who are shaking up their industries, creating strong brands and climbing their way to the top to lead successful businesses. For the next half hour, we will be celebrating all things love ahead of Valentine's Day. This episode will highlight 10 incredible women whose businesses make us feel loved both inside and out. Plus, I'll reveal my She Made It It list featuring small businesses I've had my eye on. Trust me, you're not going to wanna miss this. You're going to wanna shop and support. So let's get started. First up, we have Julissa Prado. She was inspired to start her company, Rizos Curls, when noticing a demand for simple and accessible curly hair maintenance. And now the business that started in her kitchen has gone global. Learning to love my hair was the first step towards learning to love myself. Julissa Prado has been consumed by hair her entire life. I was styling my cousin's hair, my friends, my family, and I would hold these little curl classes in my in the bathroom, and elevators, and when I was in college in the dorm rooms. But she struggled to find the right kind of products to take care of her curls. So Julissa made her own out of all natural ingredients like flaxseed and lemons. Tell me how the journey started. My grandmother and my mother and my parents, they grew up in very rural Mexico where if they wanted to have nice hair or a healthy scalp, they had to go outside, pick plants, and utilize natural ingredients and make their own concoction. Armed with those concoctions, Julissa set out to help the women and men who came to her for guidance. People who she affectionately calls undercover curlies. It's people who have naturally wavy, curly or coily textures, but you would never know because they go through great lengths to straighten it and hide that natural texture. I'm an undercover curly. And here are the pictures to prove it. Girl, if I styled your hair. <laughs> After pursuing a career in business, Julissa realized her passion was in those holistic hair products she had spent so much time perfecting. So she invested her life savings and launched Resource Curls in 2017. I literally had zero marketing dollars. Um, so what I did was the drawing on my bottle, my cousin Vanessa drew that by hand. My models on my website were my cousins and I, the photographer was my brother, the website I made. My headquarters was my Theo Juan's garage of a Washington Crenshaw where I grew up. All the fulfillers were my little cousins. And the hard work paid off. Eventually, Julissa's products were in Target locations across the country. What was that moment like? Hey, everybody, we're going to Target. Woo! Sold out. Oh, oh, my God, just thinking about it makes me emotional. <laughs> um, so I think for me, it's just a testament of like all the hard work that went into like that one moment. And to this day, I'm still 100% self-funded. And now you're on She Made It on the Today Show. <laughs> With the launch of the Rizos Curl Cream, her business became the first Latina-owned curly hair care brand to be sold in major retailers across the United States. In the last five years, their product line has grown and now includes a collapsible travel diffuser, a scalp scrub, and hair mask. I love how you package this before and after um, with the product. What was the impetus and the idea for this kind of branding? Because I think it's genius. We wanted to make it as easy as possible. So we're like, all right, let's just put all like the wash day products on one side and the styling products on the other and try to just show the steps in the actual visual. Julissa's mission to make curly hair care accessible for people around the world. When you are you know, doing exactly what you're put on this earth to do, you will start experiencing a lot of good luck. And I think that once we start seeing, you know, those those little answers, um, that's that's kind of like how you know, like I'm in the right place at the right time, and this is exactly where I should be. Awesome, right? And this month, Resource Curls launched a hairscription oils kit, an oil regimen especially created to address hair, scalp, and skin needs for all hair and skin types. You see some of the products here. And get this, by April of this year, 
Target and Ulta Beauty will be making Julissa's products available in all of their locations nationwide. We are so thrilled for her. Our next entrepreneur revolutionized the way people put on makeup. Rianne Silva is the woman behind the Beauty Blender, an egg-shaped sponge that allows anyone to apply their makeup like a pro. My biggest dream wasn't even Beauty Blender. It was the biggest distraction along the way. For Rianne Silva, she came, she saw, and she contoured. But her rise to the top of the beauty industry was a climb. Your career started behind the counter, right? I come from a very humble family. I had to work to support myself. So I got a job in a department store and I started seeing artists that would visit the stores. And I thought, well, I could do that. I'm really good at my own makeup. So I kind of just faked it till I made it. In 1993, Rianne began doing makeup for music video shoots in Los Angeles. I did the California Love video with Tupac and Dr. Dre, and from there I got introduced to Brandy Norwood, who was a singing sensation, had just gotten the show Moesha, and she took me yeah. from music to TV to movies. By 2000, Rianne became the head of the makeup department on Girlfriends, one of the first TV shows shot in high definition. I had to figure out how to keep the girls looking beautiful and young and not overly made up. Which is how so many huge businesses are born, problem, solution. But was there really a, a sponge category? I absolutely had no experience at all. I literally was thinking like, you know, maybe I could bake some sponges in my oven. What I ended up doing was cutting the edges off of the sponge. I now created an edgeless tool that allowed me to kind of just blend and mush. And what I found was happening was the actors, they would be like, oh, can I have that little sponge? I want to use it. I have a date tonight. And I realized like, this is working. With a working product in hand, Rianne started cold calling manufacturers. There was no Google. I called 411. Do you remember 411? <laughs> of course. So you were yeah. like, hey, can I have the number for Sponge Whatever, Act? whatever. Yeah. Right. One of those companies. So of the three companies that I found, the one that reoccurred the most often in my search was based in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It was a woman named Catherine Bailey who ended up helping me make Beauty Blender, not just for myself, but scaling the business so that it could become a global business. And she still works with us today. To date, over 50 million Beauty Blenders have been sold, and it's said that one of their signature sponges is sold every 17 minutes in the US. What Beauty Blender is, is a makeup application tool that requires no learning curve. And by the way, you use a Beauty Blender wet, and that is the secret to the expert blending that you get when you use Wait, wait, wait. You never use a Beauty Blender dry? No, girl! You wet, you squeeze it, and then you bounce it on your face. <laughs> The company now has 25 different types of products across the tools, cleanser, and cosmetics categories, along with a presence in major retailers like Sephora and Ulta. For women out there who have an idea and who are cutting up sponges or a version of that, what is your advice? My advice is to be tenacious. You have to find people that are aligned with your way of thinking, because if the numbers aren't making sense, the dream has to. So cool, right? And they are continuing to expand their product line beyond just sponges with products like their new bronzer, which I use in Highlighter Duo, and their skin tint, which has been worn all over the red carpet this awards season. Well, coming up, an entrepreneur who is reinventing the way we shop for jewelry. Stick around. We'll be right back. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. 
Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. It's the best time of the morning. Time for our pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. Welcome back. This next She Made It founder came up with a brilliant business proposal when she launched Ring Concierge. Engagement ring shopping can be overwhelming. And after Nicole Wegman experienced this firsthand, she designed a new path despite having no knowledge of the jewelry industry. I didn't set out to start a company. I saw this huge opportunity and thought, okay, maybe I can do something here. For Nicole Wegman, entrepreneurship had a nice ring to it but she was working in fashion in new york city when her big idea hit so you're getting engaged you go shopping for a ring it's like a girl's dream and what happened well that's the thing it wasn't really a girl's dream i had walked up and down the diamond district in new york city you know the street is lined with men who are haggling and saying are you buying are you selling come in here and then alternatively you could walk into a heritage store like Cartier, Harry Winston, Tiffany, and quickly realized you can afford absolutely nothing. Nicole saw a need in the market for an accessible millennial-friendly ring shopping experience. So she began researching the industry and taking classes at the Gemological Institute of America. I didn't know how the jewelry industry worked and I had no experience in it. And I think that really worked in my favor because I just created a company that looked the way I thought it should look from a shopping experience. In 2013, Nicole launched Ring Concierge for the next generation of shoppers, an online jewelry company with made-to-order engagement rings. I was alone, running around the city, figuring out diamonds, meeting with clients, shipping packages from my apartment. I put in insane hours, which is also partially how I didn't have to take funding because I kind of just did everything in the beginning. Name some of the things, like you did photo shoots, you got the diamonds, you did the packaging. Yeah, I mean, I didn't just manage the photo shoots. Like I was the model for the first many years because guess what, I'm free. I didn't have to charge. (laughs) Ring concierge pieces have the quality of a luxury brand at the cost of a local jeweler. So what is the business model then if you don't have the markup? and you haven't raised any money. It's been self-funded and profitable from year one, which was great. Forget even, it's not great, it's unheard of. Every single penny we spend, we look for a return. And so it grew slowly compared to most startups. You know, year one was profitable, but small. Year two was profitable, but still small. And I was okay with that. So. It was slow and small in the beginning, but it resulted in me having complete control of the company now. In 2016, Ring Concierge expanded with a ready-to-ship fine jewelry collection. And in 2021, they opened their first retail store in Manhattan. I know that you had been robbed at your New York City store. That must have been just so devastating for you, both from a business standpoint and just emotionally. I obviously recognize it was a scary thing for the team and not a great thing from a business perspective. You know, the store was reopened in less than two days. They replaced all the glass. The marketing team came out with this like fun campaign and activation when the store reopened. And then we just felt like, how do we turn what could have been really, really bad into something that is now empowering? Today, Ring Concierge is a multi-million dollar company with pieces ranging from $70 to seven figures. Fine jewelry is a serious purchase and people often hesitate, obviously, especially online. So what is your biggest tip for people who are looking to make a fine jewelry purchase but are a little nervous? I think our Instagram is a really great resource for that. We just show how these pieces actually look and function in everyday life and it's not just this fancy still image where you can't envision yourself actually wearing this piece. For other people watching 
who have an idea, what would be your best advice for that first step forward? My biggest advice would just be to take your time and figure out how to do it right instead of how do I do this as fast as possible and as big as possible. Isn't she incredible? I just love being surrounded by all the jewels. And since I last spoke to Nicole, Ring Concierge has opened a second location in New York City. They've sold more than 10,000 mini diamond tennis bracelets and have even designed custom jewelry for a celebrity wedding. Well, coming up next, you'll get to know some incredible women whose brands encourage us to show ourselves a little love. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love um, yeah. <laughs> we begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back to She Made It. Our next entrepreneur has a passion for fashion. Designer Tanya Taylor is coloring the fashion industry with her bold vision of clothing turned art. But she is also taking her talents past the runway. Take a look. Hi. Okay. Before our interview even started, something about fashion designer Tanya Taylor caught my eye. I can't stop staring at your earrings that don't match purposely. Oh. And I think that probably epitomizes who you are. I've always kind of had a little bit of a playfulness in how I like to put things together. After studying finance at McGill University in Canada, Tanya moved to New York City, enrolling in Parsons School of Design. It made me see fashion as a really open-minded, kind of approachable kind of career that I could mix what I had learned in business school, but also be really creative. So I applied for an internship with Mary Kate and Ashley Olson when they started Elizabeth and James. They were my age. They were my idols growing up. I got the internship, ended up working with them for three years. What was the best nugget or piece of advice that you got during your time with the Olsons? It was 2009 to 2012. So during that time, fashion was male dominated. It was expensive or inexpensive. There wasn't this contemporary kind of price point. And I think what I learned the most is understand the customer, understand their lifestyle, like fall in love with them and just evolve designing for them. During Tanya's time at Elizabeth and James, she started to feel the urge to go off on her own. It was a lot of naivety and a lot of confidence at that time. Like, I wanted to paint our prints. I wanted to bring art into the brand. It's interesting to me because you use two adjectives that usually don't go together, naive and confident. And I think the best example of being naive and confident is entrepreneurs. You don't know exactly what you're going to do, but you need to have a ton of confidence to be able to overcome all the roadblocks that you have every time you have them. So at the age of 24, she hired a consultant, raised a friends and family round of capital, and with one employee, launched her namesake brand, Tanya Taylor. 
Early days were bananas. I don't think there was like work hours. I remember setting up fittings at 11 p.m. and thinking it was early. Two years in, we were applying for the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund, which is a really prestigious competition in fashion. Anna Wintour, DVF, Jenna Lyons were all judges. And so you have to put together a plan of why you should be one of the top 10 brands in the US. And it's really hard to articulate that when you're at the beginning stages. So I was having trouble and all of a sudden go on Instagram and Michelle Obama had worn our dress that day. And it was one of those moments where you're like, ooh, I needed that. And we actually made it into the Vogue Fashion Fund, which was a big stepping stone for our brand. Today, Tanya Taylor clothing is available in over 100 retail stores across the country, including Saks, Nordstrom, and Rent the Runway. The brand is known for its vibrant and colorful prints, most of which she and her team paint by hand. It's also size inclusive, carrying sizes zero to 22. A lot of people think like, oh, fashion is trivial, but it really does set the tone, not only how you feel about yourself, but decisions you make throughout the day. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And so I wanted women who have been excluded from the fashion conversation for years, they should be in it. They love fashion, they're so playful, they're so confident to have clothing that matches their personalities. What would be your best advice for people who are starting in this industry and young girls who are looking at you and saying, I wanna do that too? I think understand the why. The industry requires some blinders and really kind of putting them on and feeling really confident with your own values and your own methods of how you want to design so that you don't get lost in the mix. Such incredible designs, right? And get this, Tanya's team also partnered with Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital to design custom curtains in their pediatric wing. And they donate headscarves to women and children on their first day of chemotherapy. And since being on the show last July, the brand is in over 100 retailers nationwide. And later this year, they'll be opening their very own retail space on Madison Avenue, a beautiful story all around. All right, now on to two amazing entrepreneurs with thriving beauty businesses. Both of these women had creative and innovative ideas, and let's just say they both nailed it. First up is Dr. Vivian Valenti, a woman who changed the game using her background in science to make at-home manicures quicker and more convenient. The result? Dazzle dry. My name is Dr. Vivian Valenti. I've been a chemist for 58 years. I got my bachelor's degree in the Philippines and earned my doctorate at Penn State University in 1971. I had served as an assistant professor of chemistry, a research scientist, and product developer in large companies when I realized I love solving problems by creating products that may seem mundane to some, but could be life-changing for others. Since I was 18, I have been wearing nail polish, but as I got older, I never found time to go to the salon. I made it then my mission to create a polish that dries in five minutes and lasts for weeks without using skin damaging chemicals and harmful UV rays. After years of trial and error, I created a four-step system with a flexible base coat that expands and contracts with the nails. I called it Dazzle Dry and brought it to market in 2007 with nine colors. Now we have over 170 and will sell a million bottles of product this year. It's amazing to hear that Dazzle Dry is a game changer for women and that's the formula for success. Now this is news I like to report. Dazzle Dry's Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales doubled from the year before. They have some exciting launches this year, including this Galentine's Day color collection. How cute is this? Now I'm going to introduce you to Rachel Upfell Glass, founder of Gloss Lab, who founded her brand from the idea that very few things feel as good as having your nails done. Take a look. I had been working in finance for nearly a decade when I had my first daughter. By the time I had my second, two years later, the commuting and traveling was a lot. As a working woman and a mom, I felt like manicures were an errand. When I saw a shoe shiner come into my male-dominated offices in the mornings, I'd always think, what if? So to push my idea forward, I went to nail tech training school and researched the salon industry. In 2018, using my own savings, I opened the first Gloss Lab location in New York City. Gloss Lab is a water-free, hygiene-first nail salon experience. It's also membership-based, with members paying a flat rate for monthly unlimited visits with online booking, cashless payment, and quality products. 
Today, we have 11 locations in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Maryland, and DC, with openings planned in Texas, Florida, and more. And we're even launching into retail products. I'm proud to say our customers are in good hands at Gloss Lab. And Gloss Lab is now up to 20 locations across the country with salons in places like Florida, Texas, D.C., and Connecticut. And all of the products used at Gloss Lab locations are now available for purchase on site and online. Well, coming up, four women-owned small businesses that add color, encouragement, and a little calm to our lives. I can't wait for you to meet these superstars when we come right back. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, all Lester. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. It's the best time of the morning. Time for a pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, Aunt Lester. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back. I now have even more brands from female founded companies that I'm so excited to share with you on my She Made It It list. They're fabulous businesses that will brighten up your life in the most important place, your home. Okay, let's start with Masu Wrapping Paper. Founder Libby Hample knows that wrapping paper with glitter, sequins, or certain coatings are not recyclable and was looking for paper that was 100% able to be recycled, recyclable, made in America, and had great designs. So she combined her pattern design skills and values to create premium, eco-friendly wrapping paper with these playful, beautiful designs. Massey wrapping paper is 100% recycled and recyclable with a velvety smooth finish on both sides. It's the only premium coated, 100% recycled sheet made in America. And the brand will soon be expanding into greeting cards with 30 new designs. And how sweet is this? The name Masu comes from two Japanese words for giving. How appropriate. All right, business number two, Pretty Peacock Papery. It's a small business that provides lighthearted and fun stationery for people who are looking for love in their life. After founder Natalie Henry Charles had a near-death experience delivering her daughter, she decided that life is too short not to celebrate all the happy moments. After a lengthy recovery process, Natalie was gifted an art class at a local museum, which sparked her idea for a business. All of Pretty Peacock's papery products include funny, lighthearted, and uplifting messages like, I love you more than donuts, kinda. Make yourself proud and little girls with dreams turn into women with vision. Really a beautiful story. All right, look at these guys. Next up, Huggimals. They are new best invention winning line of high quality weighted stuffed animals for kids and adults that hug you back to lower stress, bring calm, and help with sleep. Founder Marina created Huggimals for her own anxiety and trouble sleeping. Like many people, she found weighted blankets too hot and smothering, and her partner Mike was sick of her using his arm as a miniature weighted blanket. So with the input from dozens of doctors and therapists, she created Huggimals. At four and a half pounds, they are heavier than most weighted plush toys, and their weight is distributed, so it actually feels like they are hugging you back. 
Poiti Granity founded Summer Space Studio in 2017 after she tried a challenge to create one new paper flower a day for 100 days. She fell in love with the combination of paper crafts and colors. That's when Poi founded Summer Space. They create ready-to-ship bouquets and custom flower orders and hosts live paper flower-making workshops, both in person and online. How beautiful are these? Well, that's all for this episode of She Made It. Thanks for watching. And remember to shop these small businesses, scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen, or head over to today.com slash shop. I'm Joel Martin, and of course, I'll see you next time. Love is in the air, and there's nothing more romantic on Valentine's Day than cooking an elegant meal for someone you love. All right, now we know just the man to help us do it, Michelin star chef Eric Repair. He's the owner of La Bernadette, which was named, by the way, the number one restaurant what? in the world in the world for the second year. And at our tasting table, we have our bachelorettes, Chloe and Lisa. Hi, guys. You're in for Hi. such a treat. I know. Eric, I mean, we cannot just state enough just how amazing you are. So thank you thank for you hanging so with us. Thank we you. appreciate and it. And also, it's we love this idea of kind of a simple, not heavy Valentine's Day meal. Yes, something yes. simple so you have time to be with your loved one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. All right, so let's talk scallops. Yes, so we have some scallops, which are here. Can you all believe, I don't know if you all realize, no. you know when you eat a scallop? Big. It comes this from this, is baby. How it comes. Yes. The scallop is in. Can I open it? Or it's is hard. It? You, you can well, try. You need a knife. I could, I oh, could show you, you with a knife, but oh. it takes a bit of time. Okay, okay. let's not bother. Let's, yeah. <laughs> so they come up. Basically, what you end up is out of this big scallop, you have this. something like that, which I is the muscle. I know that's how they came. I and like these baby scallops. And those are the best scallops, uh, which are much smaller. Uh, yeah. Those ones come from Nantucket. The difference in between the big scallop yeah. and the small scallops, they're very sweet, those ones. Oh, they're the small sugary. ones? Yeah. Ooh, I love very a sugary sweet. scallop. Very nice. You're cooking with things that are kind of romantic, like ginger yeah. and well, lemon Well, we have grass. ginger. So to, to use ginger, you can peel the ginger with a spoon like that. With a spoon? And, and oh. Yes, and you can see the, the skin comes out. I mean, it's so simple. It's, it's so simple, right? Mm -hmm. So we, you can do that. We use lemongrass. So to get a lot of the flavor yeah, from the yeah, lemongrass, you, you do like that with your knife. Oh, using so the back side, the, not the, the sharp side. side. And yeah. then you slice oh. it like this. Ah. And when you slice it like this, you have all the flavor. The aroma? Very fresh. Now, why so ginger and lemongrass? Because it's just... Because mm, it's smell, very smell, fragrant. Smell. Oh, my smell gosh. It. It's like very fragrant. So I have some lemongrass mm. here. Mm. We're putting it in, in some butter, a little bit of butter, some ginger. Yes. yes. I have some kaffir limes. So they, they are from the lemon tree. I see. And they oh. bring a lot of flavor. Mm. We put them inside. It's very, you can it, smell like it. That. If you don't oh, yeah. have it, if you do it like that, you can smell. If you don't, if you don't have the leaves, you can use the peel of a lime. Yeah. And you sweat it like that. Then you bring some muscle juice. What, what muscle kind juice? of oh, muscle, oh. muscle juice? And, and where do you get that? Just in the store? You can buy clam juice, or you uh, can make your own uh, muscle juice. Okay. Yes. And that will be the base for the sauce. It's gonna it's gonna boil. Okay, now we I get have to some, the scallop. Some scallops, so it's very easy. You take a scallop, mm -hmm. you slice it in three mm. pieces. Now Look why at do that. you slice it thin? You just think more delicious. It's more delicious, it's easier to cook as well. Yeah, yeah. We are going to arrange it now in a plate. So this is raw, Eric? Those are raw, yes. Okay, so you're arranging it in the plate raw? You, you put raw scallops in the plate. Okay. Uh, you present them nicely as a okay. like a flower, for instance. Yes, for Valentine's that, Day. For Valentine's Look how Day, sweet right? that is. I know. A bit of salt and pepper. Okay. Mm. Like that. Then they go to the oven. Oh, you can put the plate. So you in put the, the oven? plate in the oven? Yes, but Wait. you put the plate in the oven until the scallops are warm. So oh, basically, just warm. it's okay. like 30 seconds, 40 ah. seconds. My sauce. It's boiled with all the ingredients, the aromatics. So I'm going to strain it ah, like that. So that's what's hot. Is that what and cooks it? Yes. Yeah. And then we're going to go. OK. We're going to add a bit of butter in it. I love how you do. Mm -hmm. Eric. Like this. Mm. We whisk it. We could really listen to Eric all day. I know. Couldn't? Yes, we could. And so you it takes put a bit of time lime. to incorporate the butter in it. OK. And then once you get this sauce all finished up, do you pour it on top? Is that yes, what you do? Yes, that's what you ah. do. So what you do exactly. Wait, you look at our bachelorettes, Eric. What do you think? No, they're oh, sorry. We already started. They're done. Yeah. Yeah. Is it it's so good? Amazing. Too good. Delicious. You put a bit of lime juice on your scallop. Does like that, that help cook it too? Yeah. It, yes, yes like but it's already, it's already cooked. Oh. Then you put uh -huh. some chives. See? Yes. 
And then you add your special sauce. At the, at the end, yes. you add the sauce. Eric, does it ever so, get old having the number one restaurant in the world? I mean, <laughs> seriously. Uh, you see every white hair? <laughs> <laughs> so it's worth it, is what you're saying. It's definitely worth wow. it. Wow. Well, it's, we're privileged then that you're here you with us, you pour the Eric. very hot sauce on top. Oh, and that cooks and it And that through. cooks it. And that cooks it also as All well. Right. And you have a delicious dessert that I know that the ladies are going to try and enjoy with a little this gold on really top. This is really special. Oh, thank it's you. A okay. chocolate, it's a chocolate um, souffle inside mm. the cocoa pot. Mm. And mm. then, of course, we really have delicious. Eric. They are, they mm. are so to get Good. these recipes, thank mm, you, Eric. Eric. Go to today.com. I can't handle you, Eric. Slash food. Wait, hold on. Wait. I want to get in here. I okay. can't help it. Happy Valentine's Happy Day. Valentine's. If you're scrambling for a way to show that special someone how much you care, we've got you covered. Martha Stewart is here with some ideas for DIY sweet treats, all from the latest issue of Martha Stewart Living. Martha, before we get to the cooking, your weekend, you were at the Oscars. Oh, I had so much fun. How was it? Was it? Oh, it was so fun. You looked amazing. Thank you. Thank How you. was that process getting all dolled up and going out to uh, the Oscars? Well, it takes a little while. I'm, I'm, I'm not a movie star, so I'm not. Well, you look like one there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, look, it looks nice. Wow. But I wore a short little dress, which got attention because everybody else was in long dresses. Why did you like? Why did you go for the short? I just liked short dresses. You had a horseback ride. Let it show, show off the... The, <laughs> the gams. Yeah, the gams. <laughs> what are gams? Legs. Oh, nice. Okay. Legs. <laughs> All right, well, your gams are looking good. You're going to make some sweet treats for us. Yes. What are we going to What are We, gonna we make? have so many no delicious bake? things. No bake. No oven. These are most delicious. No bake chocolate peanut butter uh, cup bars. I love that combination. And, you know, people, yeah, I know. People really love it. So what you do is melt some uh, bittersweet chocolate with four tablespoons of butter, six ounces of bittersweet chocolate. Get that all melted. Mm -hmm. Then in another bowl, mix one and a three quarters cups of peanut butter. A smooth mm -hmm. peanut butter is best. And one stick of butter. You want to mix that this together. This is in a separate bowl. Yeah, mix those together. Okay. And it should be at room temperature, so it really well, that mixes, mixes together easily. nicely. Yeah. yeah. And then add powdered sugar. And I like to sift the powdered sugar, two cups. So mix that all together. That's the base. That's the peanut butter part. Okay. Okay, so that gets all mixed in. It takes a little while to get that Work in. Work it all in. So we have it already smoothed Thank in God. a parchment-lined okay. square. This is like a brownie pan. Mm -hmm. You know, when you make your brownies, you use this kind of pan. Yep. The, the, and was this put in the refrigerator or yeah, anything? This, yeah, chill that. Then <coughs> add just... Beautiful, that melted chocolate, yep. that bittersweet uh, chocolate mixed with butter right on top. And that makes that smooth, beautiful top. Let that cool a little bit because mm -hmm. it's still warm. And you can just tilt the pan and get get it all evenly layered. See who, was your, uh, who was your date at the Oscars, by the way? Oh, I had a great date, Douglas Friedman. Who is Douglas Friedman? Oh, he's this handsome, handsome photographer that I, that I is like. Is he your Valentine? No, oh, I okay. wish, but mm. too bad. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. See, look how Look at that picture. Is. That's fantastic. Isn't that pretty? That looks like a bourbon ad. <laughs> yeah, it was a little smoky inside. Yeah, that's it. cool. That was another elevator picture. Oh. Then you just dollop on top another little bit of peanut butter, just like a quarter of a cup of peanut butter, mm -hmm. mixed with, again, a little bit of room temperature butter. Dollop that on top mm. of the... Chocolate. Why these little dollops? This is just part of well, it. Yeah, this makes the pretty marks on top. Okay. And you can make these little dollops up with a skewer. Just pull it like this. Do you think Douglas was checking out your gams? Oh, of course, he he had a he had a great time. <laughs> he was fun, um, but we had um, and all the all the movie stars were hanging yeah. out. Well, you know all those people anyway. Huh? Were what? you shocked when Parasite won Best Picture? Were you there for that moment? Or? Well, it was weird because that's not my favorite movie, but I but you know I, I can see why it won. It was, it was it a was shocker though. A shocker. All right, what's okay, next now? Chocolate caramel truffles. Oh, delicious. Okay, and this is, again, everybody loves chocolate candies. So the chocolate truffles is easy to make. Four tablespoons of butter, mm -hmm. a can of condensed milk, and some heavy cream. Dump in uh, this, again, unsweetened, unsweetened chocolate. chocolate. Three ounces of that. Yep, three tablespoons of cocoa powder. One teaspoon of vanilla. Yep, and then you can whisk that together. Okay. Then you have to let that chill. And you get a nice hard, see this how it gets yep. nice and Take hard? it off the heat once it's mixed. Yeah, once it's it. all mixed. And then just use an ice cream scoop like this. Wow, it's like a ganache. Yeah, it is. You're, see, you know what you're talking about. And let these little balls chill and then roll them with your hands into, into balls like this. All right. 
Yeah, that gets very nice little stout. balls of getting, chocolate. Yeah, delicious. Getting a little sticky out here. Okay. But here, I'll lift this up, and you just going to roll them in the right, and sprinkles. Get your and you can buy all these different colors of sprinkles now, at the cake decorating store. You know what I would do? I would get a little of the confection sugar on my fingers, and maybe that'll act as a. It might help. You know, a little roll like that. And but then you're gonna. No, well, then it's, it's not round. No, yeah, but it's sure. nice. Yeah, roll it around. Yeah. You'll get it done. Take that, Douglas Look Friedman. at that. <laughs> All right, what's next? Okay, hot so chocolate? that's that. And then hot chocolate. Everybody loves hot chocolate. Yep. But what makes this hot chocolate, which is just milk and cocoa powder. Gotta be milk. A little sugar, a little salt. Okay. Salt in your, in your hot salt, chocolate. A little salt, huh? Yeah, I love. Uh, Are you going to add I a little, little more chocolate? Yep, add a little bit of, um, of again, bittersweet chocolate. Yep. And then I made my own homemade marshmallows. Okay. And cut these marshmallows out. Use Could you just buy like fluff or something if you wanted to do it quick? Or you well, you can, make... but then you don't get the look at this the hearts, gorgeous. Yeah. Look how gorgeous that is. That says I love you they in hold the up nicest well, too. possible way. They do into your hot, delicious chocolate. See, look how pretty. Are these adults or are these? These uh... are these are well. Anybody can have these because tastes good. No, I'm, wow, that's delicious. Yeah, oh my gosh, delicious. And then we show you how in the in the magazine we show you how to make the templates for these beautiful bows and these beautiful boxes. Right. And inside the boxes, my, my grandson loves Liverpool soccer team. Okay. All the swag from Liverpool. Oh, He's getting that box. You could put some of the chocolates and things in there Jude as well. Jude has to. long hair. She's never cut. Oh, she gets that. hair ornaments. Look at Kevin's into licorice. Look at that. Oh, Kevin loves licorice. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. And then my daughter. Well, well she's dried yep, fruit. Dry, it's the healthy at, one. Look at those gorgeous dried Beautiful, fruits. though. Yeah. Beautiful. So uh, Valentine's Day doesn't have to be stressful. It can be just full of love and happiness. I love the no-bake part of it, too. It's more yeah, crafty that way. Martha, is. thank you so much. You get all these recipes and ideas. Go to today.com slash food. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. You'll get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Yeah, I love you too. <laughs> you don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We are whipping up the ultimate Valentine's dessert table with the help of our awesome Bake Squad. Bake Squad's oh. here. Season two of their hit Netflix show, it's out right now. Milk Bar founder Christina Tosi is the host with today's former head food stylist, Ashley Hope, woo, woo. and Maya Camille Broussard competing to see whose dessert will be chosen for someone special day. I love it. I love watching Bake Squad. You guys are so amazing and creative. And Christina, you know I worship you. We're making red velvet mm. something. Tell us about this. Well, I knew you were going to be my Valentine's Day buddy, inspired here. So I brought your favorite cake, the red velvet cake. Love it. We make these incredible cake truffles and layer cake for only this time of year at Milk Bar. And cake truffles for me are like the easiest hack if you want to like do a little Bake Squad moment at home. Um, they're basically cake that we mix all of the ingredients of red velvet so some milk some red uh some red food coloring some chocolate chips some cream cheese all the good stuff once that gets mushed together mm -hmm. it gets scooped out okay and then we're gonna do the real pastry okay, chef this is so it. these are little rounds of chocolate cake okay you're gonna dunk yours in white chocolate mm, okay. i'm gonna dunk mine 
they get rolled. I have a little oh, oops, oh, fork a, for you. Oh, look at me. Free? And then they get rolled around in a little mm. red velvet crumb. Oh my gosh. The move at home, once they get rolled around, is to take something super simple like a craft cone. Oh, oh coat it this. in chocolate. You got it. So that you have a nice little chocolate cone. Mm. And then you take these brilliant, super simple little toothpicks. Yeah. And you have like a party favor oh, in cute. any oh, size cute. you want. Cute. If you're scared of baking and you want us mm -hmm. to do the baking, we got you <laughs> at milkbarstore.com. You can do it in any flavor you want. I brought you the red velvet. You did, I know, and you, the truffles are my legit well, favorite, favorite, favorite thing. So, so yay. this is inspo number one from Bake Squad for my Valentine's job. Day. Yes. There's more. Then we're on to number two, <laughs> Ashley, of course. Former head stylist, what's it like being back here? Student I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of cool <laughs> being on the other side. Yeah. If I do miss working here, yes, it was a great time, mm. so. What are we making this morning? All right, today we're making this mosaic cake. Mm. A mosaic yeah. cake. Yes, check that out. Oh, that's hot on the inside. Yeah, wow. something beautiful, but it's honestly like super simple. And we're going to do it with box cake here. But okay. I like to spruce it up. If you just replace the oil with some melted butter, the milk with, uh, or the water with the milk, you get a richer, deeper flavor. Okay. And with all these three colors, we're going to do a cool hack of just doing everything in one tray using only one bowl because I don't oh, like dishes. Smart. So you kind of like visually split the batter and oh, stir. Oh, so that's why we use the foil. That's here. right. Yeah. So you have these foil dividers. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. We're just kind of, I like doing this with frosting too. It helps all the colors kind of stay in the same family. So anyways, you'll get a pink color or whatever color you want for the middle. And that then a little more red. becomes that. Exactly. So then you keep adding color to the rest oh, of the batter to help good deepen hat. it some. And when it bakes, you have your foil that's going to keep it separated, okay. and you come out with these three separate cakes. And wow. that's it. And between the, the layers, you have some frosting there? That's now? right, yeah. So we're just going to cut out some circles. This is a great project to do with Thank friends, you. Mm -hmm. you know, with your girls on Valentine's mm -hmm. Day, with your partner, however you oh, want. Right. There's plenty of cake here. I want a copy. How yeah. Is it? <laughs> you got it? Yummy? Tasty? Yes. All right. Here's oh, the trick so here. Oh, yeah, we got to see how you get this. Oh, that's squares. a light cook. Much. Mm. Okay. Here's the oh. trick here. You cut your circles in half, mm -hmm. put a little bit of frosting right there in the center, yeah. and you're going to then piece these together. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Got it, got it. And you're just going to follow that up. same. That's right. Brilliant. Stack it up. Brilliant. All Mosaic right. cake. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Miss Maya Camille. Good to see you, honey. Good How to are see you? Luke. How are you? Great. Okay, so we're making a pie, but not your ordinary pie. What are you cooking? This is a petite s'more pies, and it only takes eight to ten minutes to bake. So wow, okay. Nice and quick. So what you got here? So I have a very frothy granulated sugar and egg yolk mixture. Uh -huh. So we're going to mix that for about a minute until okay. it is nice and light and fluffy. Yeah. And then I have melted chocolate, oh, which we're going to pour bring in. It. Look Ooh. at that. Yes. Ooh. That's Ooh. There we go. <laughs> Come on. So I always Ooh. recommend melting your chocolate over a mm -hmm. double boiler in order to avoid okay. um, burning it. And then once that is combined, yeah. then we're going to take our CF yeah. and um, we're going to look at that. What is sift that? Our flour, flour our, right our purpose it. flour in there, okay. and we sift this to avoid clumps. Okay, I'm gonna and Then we have this mixture, and I have ramekins with a <laughs> brown sugar, oh, thank you. buttery graham cracker. <laughs> okay. And then so I'm you're just, just going to scoop that in that here. In. Look at this. Scoop this in here. Stop. And then you're going to just <laughs> pop this into the oven for eight to ten minutes, oh and then oh, it just melts Melting in your mouth. chocolate. Pop it with marshmallows and I voila. Some more. Quick and easy and what? delicious and. Oh, oh my God! That's good. Next That's level. Good. Next level, <laughs> ladies. Thank you all so much. This That's is terrific. Good. This is amazing. Great show. Catch season two of the Bake Squad. It's now streaming on Netflix. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I wave. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? 
migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love the ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. If you want to impress your sweetie this Valentine's Day, you cannot go wrong with Key Lime Pie. And Grand Baby Cakes founder and our pal Jocelyn De Delk Adams is here to share the sweet and simple recipe. We don't care if it's winter, we want Key Lime Pie. <laughs> Key lime pie, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, we love key lime pie, and you're saying cook it all year long. Who cares? Bake it. Oh my gosh, we make it for Christmas. We make it for Thanksgiving. Like instead of like the traditional pumpkin, you know, we also have this next to the sweet potato pie. Okay, because my dad <laughs> absolutely adores it, so I've got to make it year round. All right, the oh. best part I always think of a key lime pie is the crust. Yes, the crust has got to be on top. Give me a graham so get cracker. Get started. Oh my God, yes, I agree. So I've got some graham cracker crumbs. Mm. You can also just buy some graham crackers and grind them up in your food processor. I've got a little sugar because you know we're getting sweet here. Mm -hmm. And then I've got some melted butter. Mm. And I'm just gonna do a quick whisk and get those all combined. And that's our crust. How easy was that, easy. right? Easy. Yes. So I'm gonna mix that all together. Let that kind of become like wet sand, mm -hmm. like that kind of consistency. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna pour that right into our pie that. plate, which mm. I've also we like sprayed with a nonstick spray. Simple. Yeah, non spray. just get okay. that in there. Okay. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna start patting down. You can pat down with your hands. You can also use like a measuring mm. cup and also get that really smooth in there. Uh -huh. This is what I like to yeah, do. So easy. it looks a little bit, you know, more professional and too how on you, the side. Oh, there, you get it up by pushing it up like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just start pushing it up the side. Okay, yep. so we've got our crust. Yeah. You have to bake it first, is that true? Yeah, so I like to bake mine for about maybe like 10 minutes just to kind of get like a nice kind of golden color on the outside. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of sets it up a little bit more too. Okay. So we're going to pretend like we baked this one. Okay. And we're going to get to our filling. Like really oh, quickly, simple. you can you just get this together. Minute. I know. Okay. Hey, speed, <laughs> speed here. We got to play the TV game, so we got to go fast. Okay. So I'm going to get to our filling. I've got some sweetened condensed milk here. Mm, I'm going to add that right that. into, oh, yeah, thick, right? I love oh, the thick. hums. Like, oh, thick, mm, thick. thick. It's luscious. It's mm. creamy. This is like that secret weapon in your key lime pie that gives it that beautiful, luscious consistency. Okay. And I've got some egg yolks. Mm -hmm. just We're going to yolk. skip the, the whites. We're going to just the egg yolks. going to make it super rich and delicious and actually like a nice, moist texture. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add in just two more ingredients. Of course, our key lime juice. Yes. How much, Grab how this much at the grocery you get, store. You, you can buy key yep. lime juice at the grocery yeah. store? Easily, right on the shelves. Or if you want to turn this into like a lemon, you know, baked pie, oh, you yum. can easily use lemon juice too. Yeah. Can I ask a dumb it's question? It's great that way too. Is, is key yeah. lime juice different lime than juice? lime juice? Is it just lime juice? It totally is. No, it is. There are different key limes. They're like the little small limes that you'll see, those specialty limes, versus like those bigger limes that you see in the grocery so store. When so you, the key limes, it would take you a long time to juice all those. You have to way. look for the actual key lime juice. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Key lime juice. Got you want to grab that instead okay. of the lime juice. Okay. That thank you. The grocery store. Thank you. And then finally, just a little vanilla. Oh, yummy. And I'm just going to whisk all that together until it combines and it takes like a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. oh, and then how do you yeah. make it green? 
Yeah. You don't it make green? it green. So when oh, you, you see people with like green? the green yeah. ones, yeah. they've added That's like food coloring, food coloring oh. to that. Oh. Yeah, that is I not that. like a traditional, like real key lime highlight. Key? We don't play around with that. I oh. sort of like it just like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is how you do it, right? This is the consistency. <laughs> this is the look. This is what you want. And we're going to pour oh, that oh, right oh, into. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at, yeah. look at Beautiful. Look at that. I just like to watch yeah. the pouring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I could lick that. Ooh. I know it has it eggs in it. It is kind of seductive. It is okay, beautiful. Now well, I mean, do? hey, we got Valentine's Day coming up, right? And you bake that, and baby? And then if you. Yeah, you bake this baby. If you have like a deeper pan, just maybe double the filling. Yeah. Totally mm -hmm. up to you. And then if you want to do this beautiful variation that I have here, this is my raspberry Ooh, pretty. key lime pie. Wow. It's gorgeous, right? And, and you just really add a little pops. whipped cream on top? Yeah, I just add a little whipped cream on top. Here, I just use some melted raspberry jam and I kind of just spoon it mm, over. Make it marbleized. Just drizzle. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then and it just adds something special to it. Or you can bake as how, is. How long do you bake and then it, I just kinda Jocelyn? Just, uh, you bake for about 10, 15 that minutes max. Easy. Easy. And then it comes out like this. Can we oh. see? <gasps> there's our, there's our Jocelyn. traditional Jocelyn. key thank lime you. pie. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Grand baby cakes rock. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, Jocelyn. Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm. And for this recipe, head to today.com slash food. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. NBC News, streaming free now. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Good morning, welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. It's the best time of the morning. Time for our pop start, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Oh, welcome back. They say the way to a person's heart is through their stomach, and that certainly rings true on today food this morning. Yes, we are going to make Valentine's easy, we hope, with some mail order gifts you can ship straight to the doors of the ones you adore. Mm -hmm. And one more reason to love them, they're all from small businesses. Food and lifestyle expert Alejandra Ramos joins us with some creative ideas. Alejandra, we love that you're helping out the small businesses. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. I, the first is, well, it's Lagusta's Luscious <laughs> Chocolate Orange Heart. Tell us. Yes, Lagusta Slushes are based in New Paltz, New York. Women owned 100% ethical ingredients, and everything they do is a work of art. Taste and looks just as good. I love these blood orange hearts. So it's blood orange caramel, white chocolate ganache, dark chocolate ganache, and a candied orange on top. Amazing. Love it. A lot of people are wondering uh, about a date night, possibly, over, yeah. uh, over Valentine's Day. And you've got a kind of a cute uh, picnic box. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So this is from Zingerman's in Ann Arbor. They're a Midwestern fave, and I think everyone around the country should love them. So this is a French picnic box. It's got everything you need for a French picnic. You've got the cornichons, the sausage, cheese, a gorgeous loaf of bread, even some chocolates mm. from Angelina in Paris. Just add a picnic blanket, bottle of wine, and you've got your date night sorted. Mm. Alejandro, if, if I'm looking to send something to an entire family that, that I, I love dearly, what do you have for that? I got something for you. Daisy Cakes makes the most incredible layer cakes. I love her Valentine's cake. It's strawberry and white chocolate. Four layer cakes, they sent, they're sent to you frozen. They thaw to perfection, or you can even just thaw mm. a slice or two at a time. You know, I'm not, not judging. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alejandro, we, you, you've got churros 
and yes. ice cream on the list. Oh, yeah. And oh, not just any kind of churros. These are heart-shaped churros from La New Yorkina here in New York. They also come with the dipping sauces, mm. the cinnamon sugar, Oof. and ice cream. That sounds delicious. Uh, I want. All right, so let's good. talk molten lava cake. Mm, you okay. had me at hello, yes. Alejandra. <laughs> Hello, hello, molten lava cakes from Hot Cakes in Seattle. And these are just the chocolate that you know and love. They also come in strawberry, peanut butter, s'mores. They even have vegan and gluten-free versions so that everybody can enjoy. They're shipped to you frozen. You pop them in the oven 15 minutes and you've got delicious restaurant dessert in your own home. All right, Alejandra, I know a lot of folks would love this. How about a delicious bread basket? Ooh, can you imagine yes. Ooh, that yes. came to your house? <laughs> For the carb lover, Bread Basket NYC curates these bread baskets with baked goods from all the best bakeries and pastry shops. This is their love basket, which is a special for Valentine's. I love the little heart on the sourdough bowl. You've got little rolls, pink and white cookies, not black and white, chocolate, and this gorgeous little chocolate sprinkle cake. Alejandro, what about a coffee lover? Let's, let's say that you've, you've got all a coffee right. lover that you're shopping for. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so for the one you love, a latte, Bean Box oh. has amazing. <laughs> you like that, right? I did. <laughs> Bean Box does a selection of coffees from around the world. This is their around the world sampler. You get 16 coffees from different countries and from all the best coffee growing regions oh, in like the that. world. Uh, they come with little caramels too. They also have subscriptions and they even have a chocolate and coffee pairing box. Plus, if your partner is a tea person, they have coffee and teas, you know, for That's those great. opposite attract kind of couples. All right. Some really cute ideas. And if you want to, thank you, Alejandra. Thank if you, you want to get these shipped to your loved ones in time for Valentine's Day, go to today.com slash shop. All the info's there. Hey guys, welcome to The Boost on Today All Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Okay, we're getting into the spirit with all kinds of love stories, including a man who got a second chance at happiness later in life with the help of his daughter, plus the enduring love story behind some of New York's most well-known restaurants. But let's kick it off with Jenna. She attempts to answer one of life's burning questions. Just what is love? We can go in here. Okay. You can have a seat here. This is where Dr. Sandra Langishlog has been putting love to the test. She's an associate professor in psychological sciences at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. For nearly two decades, she has studied the relationship between love and the brain, hoping to learn how our brains react to love. And this time, I was one of her research participants. Okay, so I'm gonna put the cap on you. I had to put on an electrode cap used for an EEG test. The test measures brain activity. This is your brain activation as it's happening right now. Now it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm, it um, is cool. You can see that when you talk or yeah. when you move, you get a lot of noise. And then these signals here are, are eye blinks. So if you blink a couple times, yeah. So yeah, there see, are. these are cool. eye blinks. Using the data collected from brainwave tests just like this, Dr. Langishlog has proven that when you're shown a picture of the person you love, your brain creates stronger electrical signals than when you see pictures of other people. With more than 30 electrodes attached to my head, I was ready to give this experiment a try. I'm just curious to see what, what's gonna happen. For six minutes straight, I was shown multiple pictures of my husband of 14 years, Henry, my good friend Al Roker, a stranger as a baseline, and my cat, Hollywood Hager. I was eager and looking forward to seeing the results. Each picture was up for just a second. Okay, so experiment done. Yes. What did you find? Yeah, so we have four colors here. Let's just four hope the cat isn't more than the husband. <laughs> <laughs> so this black one here is your beloved, your husband. This red one here is your friend. My friend, Al Roker. The blue one is the stranger, and the green one is the cat. Okay. We are looking at the late positive potential, and actually positive is plotted downwards here, so okay, the more good. down. I was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> you were getting worried. Yes. <laughs> the more down, the more positive, actually. That is a lot bigger in response to your husband mm -hmm. than the Anything friend and the stranger. Else. Yeah. Your response to the cat is strong. not quite as strong as to your husband, well, but it's good. there. Which makes sense because you're probably also very attached to the cat. But more attached to the husband. To the husband. My test showed the electrical signals in my brain were strongest in response to my husband, followed not far behind by Hollywood the cat. And when it came to my friend Al, well, my results showed my brain reacted least strongly to both him and the stranger, but Al won by just a hair. When I test a group of people, sometimes their friends 
have a little stronger response than the strangers because yes, it's someone you know and like, yeah. right? It's yeah. not a stranger. Yeah. That is a very neutral picture. Yeah. But sometimes I don't find a significant difference. Yeah, there's a slight difference, right? Yeah, I would say that's meaningful. Sorry, Al. And what you can also see, after the picture started being on the screen, your brain starts to distinguish between... Who is who? Right. So it starts to process, who is this person? Do I know them? Yeah. Do I love them? Do I like them? Yeah. So my husband yeah. and I could stay married. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Research shows that nearly everyone will fall in love at least once throughout their lives. And through her studies, Dr. Langeschlag says your brain can actually help you fall in or even out of love. You learn something new every day. There you have that. All right, next. Have you ever wondered what dating might look like in the year 3000? NBC Savannah Sellers explores falling in love in the metaverse. This is a duck world where you can feed the ducks. So have either of you been on a date here? Oh, yeah, I've been on a date here. It was pretty chill. Feeding ducks, a nature stroll, or even a round of mini golf. Welcome to Dating in the Metaverse, where you can come as yourself, that's me, or a floating robot, all from the comfort of your couch. This is our virtual speed matching world. Flirtual is a VR dating app that lets you go on dates with people all over the world in different VR worlds and games. Anthony Tan and Kyle Farwell are the Gen Zers who run the dating company, which operates similar to a real-life dating app. Users match through profiles via their app or website, but instead of drinks at a bar in the neighborhood, hopeful singles meet up virtually. This is where I met my girlfriend uh, two years ago. In this bar? Um, yeah. So when you tell people, would you say, we met at a bar? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Luke Smith is a 19-year-old teen in the UK looking for love, both on real-life dating apps and on virtual. It's the same thing with online dating. Like, it started off with the younger generation, but as the older generation got more used to it, they started using it and so on. And I feel like the metaverse will end up being the same way. Flirtual's not the only one trying to get in on this. Planet Theta is the world's first dedicated space for virtual reality dating. Aurora Townsend, the company's chief marketing officer, calls it a safer way to meet up. It's so normalized that when we, as women, go to like a bar or a restaurant to go meet someone that we met through a dating app, to text multiple friends our exact GPS location to make sure that, hey, if anything sketchy is going on, this is where I'm at. We want to change that. Plus, there's the convenience. If you have a busy work week, you know, you can <laughs> be in your sweatpants with a glass of wine chatting with people. And because you mostly see people as avatars first, fans of VR dating say it can lead to better connections. Like say on Tinder, you know, you're swiping, you're just seeing their faces. You're not really looking at their personalities. So metaverse daters might wait a few dates before revealing their actual faces. But here you're getting their exact personality. So tell me, what is it like dating someone in VR? It feels very real. You know, I hope this kind of feels pretty real here. Uh -huh. Like, I can give Kyle a hug and we can just like... Oh. <laughs> oh. So, can you give me a hug? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, come in here. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's funny. Um, a lot of people experience in VR what we call phantom sense or phantom touch where uh, you touch someone in VR and you can feel it. And now there's somebody that you like that you're talking to in the metaverse. Absolutely. So will you try to take that into real life? I'm hoping to. From the metaverse to more traditional social media, where one woman is inspiring millions with her message of self-love. I'm Becca and I am a makeup artist and social media content creator. I post a lot of beauty tutorials and videos about self-love because I have a birthmark that covers majority of my face. I was born in South Korea and I was adopted when I was a baby. I grew up in a very small town in northern Minnesota. For me growing up, I definitely felt like I stood out not only because I have a birthmark but also because I'm a person of color in a very small, predominantly white town. I felt like I had to fit in with the people that were around me and I felt like I had to do certain things to make myself look normal because of my birthmark. So I definitely struggled. 
I remember being really insecure about people staring at me, people making comments to my parents. From the age of about 12 till my mid-20s, I was very uncomfortable going outside without makeup on, even to the point like if I was at a sleepover with a friend who even knew that I had a birthmark, I'd still get up early beforehand and like put makeup on just because I felt that uncomfortable without it. Absolutely loving this one. My relationship with makeup really started out kind of in a negative way. It was my security blanket. It was the thing that I used to hide behind. And then as I grew older, I started discovering makeup as a creative outlet and something more than just a way to hide my birthmark. My turning point for feeling comfortable in my own skin was starting to put myself out there and then finding that community of people who could relate to me. Not just people with birthmarks, it's other people, everybody has an insecurity, right? I saw a lot of posts from like strangers who then came out, you know, saying that they thought I was brave or, you know, like that it was really amazing that I would put myself out there like that. And just to embrace that and like, that's the part that makes me like uniquely me and you uniquely you. It's just so cool to have that sense of community. Here are my eyes. Pretty cool, I think. I feel like my world has totally opened up now that I am so comfortable in my own skin. There's so much more freedom in being able to feel like I can just fully be myself. I would tell my younger self to not worry so much about what other people think of you, and I think that goes for anybody's younger self. I think we put too much value in other people's opinions of you, and for me, it's just opened so many doors to just fully embrace myself, and I just have this amazing life now because of it. I love sharing my story because it brings a sense of community and that it's okay to embrace your unique self. I don't feel like there's enough representation out there right now, and I'd love to see more of that. Becca's journey to self-love also led her to her new husband, Dalton. Congrats, you guys. Stay tuned for more feel-good stories right after the break. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. Film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News. Streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Welcome back, guys. We are celebrating love on the boost, and this next couple, known to their online followers as the property lovers, have captured the hearts of thousands. Take a look. It took a while to get here, but we're both proud of who we are, and we're proud to be a same-sex couple raising children. PJ and Thomas McKay's love story began more than a decade ago in their hometown of Cleveland, Tennessee, when they met at a party. I was like, this guy is pretty cool, but I think it was like a year or two later that we reconnected over Facebook, and we started hanging out the next day. We both were like, we could see this going somewhere. And in October of 2015, they officially tied the knot. You may kiss your husband. Shortly after getting married, the couple began documenting their life and love for home renovation. We're actually going to take you guys along with us as we renovate this bathroom. Capturing the hearts of hundreds of thousands of fans across social media. We had no idea that it would turn into um, a profession. It was just more about sharing our lives and then it kind of turned into something else entirely. 
What kind of feedback have you received over the years? We have a whole uh, bulletin board that PJ made full of letters from people all over who have written us and shared a little bit about their lives and how our lives connect. People have especially connected to the couple as they've opened up about their path to parenthood. Along the way, you talk about the fact that you had this idea of growing your family. How did you navigate that? Well, we always knew we wanted kids. We just didn't know how to go about it. There was just something that was pulling us towards foster care. We're gonna be doing foster care classes for the next nine weeks. We were hesitant because we are in a homosexual relationship, but what sexual orientation you are, the color of your skin, none of that matters as long as the kid is going to, uh, to a good home. In 2019, PJ and Thomas became foster parents, opening their home to three young siblings, Alan, Raya, and Anna. How old were they when you first got the kids? They were four, two and a half, and 18 months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd never changed a diaper in my life. We went from zero kids to three kids overnight. There's so much uncertainty in foster care because there are mounds and mounds of paperwork, check-ins from the caseworkers. Our court dates kept getting pushed back because of COVID. It was an emotional journey. For us, we really just tried to focus on the fact that no matter how long the kids were gonna be with us, that we could change their life in a positive way. And in August of 2021, the McKays became a forever family, adopting the three young kids. What does a good day look like in your household with three yeah. little ones? It usually involves a trip out to our farm that we are fixing up. The kids love it out there. And then dinner around the table. We're super big on creating those moments together as a family. In their small southern town, the McKays admit not many families look like them, but say their community has been so welcoming. I was outside on our front porch and our mailman came up and he said, oh, is that your husband? Are those y'all's kids? And I said, yes, we adopted them. And then he shared with me that he grew up in a very conservative Christian home. He just said, you know, Jesus loves you guys, I love you guys, and I think that's wonderful. It was a really special moment. And for PJ and Thomas, it's a reminder that family, no matter how it's made, is everything. Picture this, young PJ, young Thomas are here right now. What would they say? about the life that you've built? Well, young Thomas would say, number one, I don't believe it. And number two, that this is kind of what I always hoped it would look like. Young PJ would be like, I just want to speed it up to get to, to where we are now. What a lovely family. All right, as we get older, our family's love and support remains just as important as ever. So meet a dad who got a second shot at love later in life, thanks to his daughter, Michelle. I was sitting at a table next to you. Right, when your girlfriend was With my aunt, and I belong to a different senior club. And after I met him, I said, I have to join his senior club. <laughs> and I did, and I remember he said, Thank you for dancing with me on Friday night. And I said, well, thank you for dancing with me. A dance that would change the lives of newlyweds, Joanne and Michael Trojan. Did you ever think that you would find love at 70? Mm -mm. Never. No, never. And you found it? Yes. How has it been? <sighs> Wonderful. And no one is happier for the New York-based couple than Michael's daughter, Michelle Devine, who supported him through a very difficult time. 19 years ago, my mom got double pneumonia. My mom also had muscular dystrophy, but she was a strong woman. But in the summer of 2004, Michelle's mom Angie's health took a turn, and that fall she passed away at age 57. It was extremely painful to lose her. Over the next nine years, Michelle and Michael's grief was compounded by the untimely death of her brothers, Scott to pancreatic cancer, and just eight months later, Todd of a massive heart attack. Grieving the loss of two of his children, Michael moved in with Michelle and her husband. What was he like throughout all of that? He lost his wife, he lost his two sons. I have to say he was very miserable. He was very sad, he was very angry. My father doesn't say how hurt he is or sits and cries. That's not who my father is. But when he lost his sons, he cried. Finally, I said, that's it, Dad. You've sat long enough. You need to go meet friends. Go meet people. Go to the senior club. Michael agreed, and it did him a world of good. He asked this lady to dance with him, and her name was Joanne. 
After a dance and some early maneuvers to get one another's attention, the two were inseparable. Remember, I know that I found your keys in the bedroom. Oh, yes. So I brought them on, I gave them to the president. And she announced, somebody leave their keys in the wash house. Yeah. And then I made a big fuss. Yeah. I didn't have to make a big fuss, but I did. She really was like an angel. She made my father light up again and be happy. After dating and dancing for four years, Michael asked Joanne to marry him. He was like, Michelle, I want to go get a ring. He wanted to get engaged and get married again. It was Joanne's birthday, and my dad was nervous, of course. And he goes, I don't know if I can really get down on my knee, but I'm going to try my best. <laughs> did you get down on the knee? No. I did. Kind of he got down on the chair. This August, Michael and Joanne walked down the aisle and started a new chapter together. I think it's very easy to harden in right. life, you know, mm -hmm. after whether it's tragedy uh -huh. or whether it's not having somebody in your life for decades, right, when right. everybody around you does. Right. But you both didn't mm -hmm. do that. Right. How did you get to where you are now? Don't give up <laughs> because um, it was very, very unexpected. To, to even now, it's like almost a dream come true. Well, it is a dream come true. So now I met, him, you know, my Michael. My Michael. And I love everything about you. Oh, and we are so thrilled because we have Michelle, Michael, and Joanne. They are joining us now from Michelle's home in New York. Hi, you all. Okay, first of all, my Michael is like killing me, but I want to start with Michelle. Michelle, just tell us what it's like to see your dad this happy. I am so happy that my dad is finally happy. Um, it makes my heart happy, you know, um, to see him come from where we've come from, both of us, his sons, my brothers, was so hard, but... Um, my, my only single prayer every day was that my dad would be happy once again. Mm -hmm. well, that, and he finally is. Mm -hmm. That is so beautiful, Michelle. We can see how happy mm -hmm. you are. <laughs> and uh, both of you, Michael and Joanne, the newlyweds, can we just say congratulations? Mm -hmm. Joanne, as Hoda mm -hmm. said, my Michael has a beautiful mm -hmm. ring to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. When we come back, the love that goes into one of New York's most delicious meals. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, OK? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Welcome back to The Boost. Some say food is a love language, and that couldn't be more true than a renowned New York City eatery, Via Carota. 
On any given day, you can find owner and chefs Rita Sodi and Jody Williams in their kitchen at Via Carota Restaurant, preparing a fresh Italian feast for their many customers. It's a love story that began with food and has grown into a five restaurant empire, all located in the West Village of Manhattan. Via Carota is, is quite literally a love story. It's your love story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, we like that so embarrassed. It's like, oh yes. But it is. We yeah. wouldn't be here if the two of you didn't find each other. Yes, no, that's, that's true. Sure. But it's a love story. I mean, it's our relationship and our story and then just for food and cooking and restaurants in the neighborhood in New York City. The couple, both restaurateurs, met 15 years ago at Rita's E. Sodi restaurant and found out they shared a passion for all things Italian and cooking, soon falling in love. We would work so much that we said in, in jest, maybe we should open a restaurant right. together, otherwise we would not see each other. And so Via Carota was born. Now, eight years after opening the restaurant, known for its romantic setting inspired by Rita's Tuscan upbringing and Jody's French cuisine background, it's become a hot spot. Visits from people like the Obamas, Paul McCartney, and other high-profile guests, and its authentic, flavorful dishes have made it hard to snag a reservation. What do you credit the success of, of Via Carota to? When we walk in the restaurant, it's like walking home, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, Via Carota is the street where uh, our home was in Italy, you know, on the, in the hill of Florence. The two of you, Jody and Rita, have become so successful, not just here, but in all of your projects. What is it? Passion, passion for, for what we do. It's not just a job, it's what we love to do. Behind all this, there's Rita and Jody, and we deeply love each other, we collaborate, and at the end of the day, we, we say, well, we always have each other. We feel lucky to be here and, and have all the guests and the stuff we have. And now folks can get a taste of the restaurant at home with their new cookbook, Via Corroda, which tells their story and includes recipes from the restaurant. People will always ask for this recipe or that recipe, and just sort of, um, as a, an activity to bring it all together. The writing, the story, the recipes, to share, be able to share Via Carota with uh, other people. And it was a good uh, um, time to, to put all our recipe together. I had a chance to visit their kitchen. It's so cool. And this is a cacio pepe? Yes. Oh my God, it smells so good. And try the food. Mm. Bon appetito, yeah. Bon appetito, okay. Bon appetito. What are your favorite dishes on the menu here that made their way into the cookbook? If I say the, the insalata verde is, yeah, I think so. Oh, the uh, green salad? The yeah. green salad, really? yeah. The green salad we eat every day. The food we eat every day. So we have some charred leeks, a pool. Oh uh, so these are leeks? Yeah, yeah these one. Uh, what else? Branzino. Branzino. I love branzino, the white fish, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the pasta, of course, and uh, all the salad. Oh man, then I'm gonna try to make that. This is unreal. It's just egg and the artichoke. It's so good. No, so thank you for coming. coming. Cheers. 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 I don't know about you, but I'm kind of hungry right now. <laughs> all right, stick around for our morning boost, which is sure to put a smile on your. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is
is what it looks and feels like. The, latest film. the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back to The Boost. We have one more video for you today, and get ready. It's sure to bring a smile to your face. There's no shortage of perks when it comes to sitting courtside at an NBA game, but a young fan in San Francisco got the thrill of her life. She was at a Lakers-Warriors uh, game over the weekend. Check it out. LeBron James, even when he's not playing, has such an impact. Watch the girl on the right. <laughs> She had no idea that's who was going to pop down next to her. Okay, that little girl's name is Gaia. She described what was going through at the, at her mind. She said, I was like, oh, my God, the greatest player of all time is sitting next to me. Oh, my God. She called it the best moment of her life. She uh, actually came to the game. Uh -huh. She got to meet LeBron after. Wow. She came to the, She wanted to watch him break the record, but she missed that game. She came there. He hurt his ankle. She was like, bummer. He's not even going to be playing. And yeah. then what happened? He plops down. I mean, yeah. next to her. Oh, God, I love those videos, right? They get me every time. Thank you so much for spending this Valentine's Day with us here on The Boost. Don't forget, spread some love today. We'll see you next time on Today All Day. Do you ever just look around and say, I can't believe we did this? Yes, totally. That was like the light bulb moment. I got up there and I just said I quit my job and started this company. And I just kept going. It was a lot of testing and learning. There's been a lot of tears along the way. We can actually change the world. When did you have the moment, I made it, I did it? Hi everyone and welcome to She Made It, where we celebrate female entrepreneurs who are shaking up their industries, creating strong brands and climbing their way to the top to lead successful businesses. For the next half hour, we will be celebrating all things love ahead of Valentine's Day. This episode will highlight 10 incredible women whose businesses make us feel loved both inside and out. Plus, I'll reveal my She Made It It list featuring small businesses I've had my eye on. Trust me, you're not going to wanna miss this. You're going to wanna shop and support. So let's get started. First up, we have Julissa Prado. She was inspired to start her company, Rizos Curls, when noticing a demand for simple and accessible curly hair maintenance. And now the business that started in her kitchen has gone global. Learning to love my hair was the first step toward learning to love myself. Julissa Prado has been consumed by hair her entire life. I was styling my cousin's hair, my friends, my family, and I would hold these little curl classes in my in the bathroom with elevators and when I was in college in the dorm room. But she struggled to find the right kind of products to take care of her curls. So Julissa made her own out of all natural ingredients like flaxseed and lemons. Tell me how the journey started. My grandmother and my mother and my parents, they grew up in very rural Mexico where if they wanted to have nice hair or a healthy scalp, they had to go outside, pick plants, and utilize natural ingredients and make their own concoction. Armed with those concoctions, Julissa set out to help the women and men who came to her for guidance. People who she affectionately calls undercover curlies. It's people who have naturally wavy, curly or coily textures, but you would never know because they go through great lengths to straighten it and hide that natural texture. I'm an undercover curly. And here are the pictures to prove it. 
Girl, if I styled your hair. <laughs> After pursuing a career in business, Julissa realized her passion was in those holistic hair products she had spent so much time perfecting. So she invested her life savings and launched Resos Curls in 2017. I literally had zero marketing dollars. Um, so what I did was the drawing on my bottle, my cousin Vanessa drew that by hand. My models on my website were my cousins and I, the photographer was my brother, the website I made. My headquarters was my Theo Hans garage of a Washington Crenshaw where I grew up. All the fulfillers were my little cousins. And the hard work paid off. Eventually, Julissa's products were in Target locations across the country. What was that moment like? Hey everybody, we're going to Target. Woo! Sold out. Oh my God, just thinking about it makes me emotional. <laughs> um, so I think for me, it's just a testament of like all the hard work I went into like that one moment. And till this day, I'm still 100% self-funded. And now you're on She Made It on the Today Show. <laughs> With the launch of the Rizos Curl Cream, her business became the first Latina-owned curly hair care brand to be sold in major retailers across the United States. In the last five years, their product line has grown and now includes a collapsible travel diffuser, a scalp scrub, and hair mask. I love how you package this before and after um, with the product. What was the impetus and the idea for this kind of branding? Because I think it's genius. We wanted to make it as easy as possible. So we're like, all right, let's just put all like the wash day products on one side and the styling products on the other and try to just show the steps in the actual visual. Julissa's mission to make curly hair care accessible for people around the world. When you are you know, doing exactly what you're put on this earth to do, you will start experiencing a lot of good luck. And I think that once we start seeing, you know, those those little answers, um, that's, that's kind of like how you know, like I'm in the right place at the right time and this is exactly where I should be. Awesome, right? And this month, Resos Curls launched a hairscription oils kit, an oil regimen especially created to address hair, scalp, and skin needs for all hair and skin types. You see some of the products here. And get this, by April of this year, Target and Ulta Beauty will be making Julissa's products available in all of their locations nationwide. We are so thrilled for her. Our next entrepreneur revolutionized the way people put on makeup. Rianne Silva is the woman behind the Beauty Blender, an egg-shaped sponge that allows anyone to apply their makeup like a pro. My biggest dream wasn't even Beauty Blender. It was the biggest distraction along the way. For Rianne Silva, she came, she saw, and she contoured. But her rise to the top of the beauty industry was a climb. Your career started behind the counter, right? I come from a very humble family. I had to work to support myself, so I got a job in a department store. And I started seeing artists that would visit the stores, and I thought, well, I could do that. I'm really good at my own makeup. So I kind of just faked it till I made it. In 1993, Rianne began doing makeup for music video shoots in Los Angeles. I did the California Love video with Tupac and Dr. Dre, and from there I got introduced to Brandy Norwood, who was a singing sensation, had just gotten the show Moesha, and she took me from music to TV to movies. By 2000, Rianne became the head of the makeup department on Girlfriends, one of the first TV shows shot in high definition. I had to figure out how to keep the girls looking beautiful and young and not overly made up. Which is how so many huge businesses are born, problem, solution. But was there really a, a sponge category? I absolutely had no experience at all. I literally was thinking like, you know, maybe I could bake some sponges in my oven. What I ended up doing was cutting the edges off of the sponge. I now created an edgeless tool that allowed me to kind of just blend and mush. And what I found was happening was the actors, they would be like, oh, can I have that little sponge? I wanna use it, I have a date tonight. And I realized like, this is working. With a working product in hand, Rianne started cold calling manufacturers. There was no Google, I called 411. Do you remember 411? <laughs> of course. So you were yeah. like, hey, can I have the number for Sponge Whatever, Act. whatever, yeah, right. one of those companies. So of the three companies that I found, 
The one that reoccurred the most often in my search was based in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It was a woman named Catherine Bailey who ended up helping me make Beauty Blender, not just for myself, but scaling the business so that it could become a global business. And she still works with us today. To date, over 50 million beauty blenders have been sold, and it's said that one of their signature sponges is sold every 17 minutes in the U.S. What Beauty Blender is, is a makeup application tool that requires no learning curve. And by the way, you use a Beauty Blender wet, and that is the secret to the expert blending that you get when you use wait, a Beauty Wait, wait, wait. You never use a Beauty Blender dry? No, girl! You wet, you squeeze it, and then you bounce it on your face. <laughs> The company now has 25 different types of products across the tools, cleanser, and cosmetics categories, along with a presence in major retailers like Sephora and Ulta. For women out there who have an idea and who are cutting up sponges or a version of that, what is your advice? My advice is to be tenacious. You have to find people that are aligned with your way of thinking because if the numbers aren't making sense, the dream has to. So cool, right? And they are continuing to expand their product line beyond just sponges with products like their new bronzer, which I use and highlighter duo, and their skin tint, which has been worn all over the red carpet this awards season. Well, coming up, an entrepreneur who is reinventing the way we shop for jewelry. Stick around. We'll be right back. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? <laughs> Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. NBC News, streaming free now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back. This next She Made It founder came up with a brilliant business proposal when she launched Ring Concierge. Engagement ring shopping can be overwhelming, and after Nicole Wegman experienced this firsthand, she designed a new path despite having no knowledge of the jewelry industry. I didn't set out to start a company. I saw this huge opportunity and thought, okay, maybe I can do something here. For Nicole Wegman, entrepreneurship had a nice ring to it but she was working in fashion in new york city when her big idea hit so you're getting engaged you go shopping for a ring it's like a girl's dream and what happened well that's the thing it wasn't really a girl's dream i had walked up and down the diamond district in new york city you know the street is lined with men who are haggling and saying are you buying are you selling come in here and then alternatively you could walk into a heritage store like Cartier, Harry Winston, Tiffany, and quickly realized you can afford absolutely nothing. Nicole saw a need in the market for an accessible millennial-friendly ring shopping experience. So she began researching the industry and taking classes at the Gemological Institute of America. I didn't know how the jewelry industry worked and I had no experience in it. And I think that really worked in my favor because I just created a company that looked the way I thought it should look from a shopping experience. In 2013, Nicole launched Ring Concierge for the next generation of shoppers, an online jewelry company with made-to-order engagement rings. I was alone. 
running around the city, figuring out diamonds, meeting with clients, shipping packages from my apartment. And I put in insane hours, which is also partially how I didn't have to take funding because I kind of just did everything in the beginning. Name some of the things, like you did photo shoots, you got the diamonds, you did the packaging. Yeah, I mean, I didn't just manage the photo shoots. Like I was the model for the first many years because guess what, I'm free. I didn't have to charge. <laughs> Ring concierge pieces have the quality of a luxury brand at the cost of a local jeweler. So what is the business model then if you don't have the markup and you haven't raised any money? It's been self-funded and profitable from year one, which was great. Forget even, it's not great, it's unheard of. Every single penny we spend, we look for a return. And so it grew slowly compared to most startups. You know, year one was profitable, but small. Year two was profitable, but still small. And I was okay with that. So. It was slow and small in the beginning, but it resulted in me having complete control of the company now. In 2016, Ring Concierge expanded with a ready-to-ship fine jewelry collection. And in 2021, they opened their first retail store in Manhattan. I know that you had been robbed at your New York City store. That must have been just so devastating for you, both from a business standpoint and just emotionally. I obviously recognize it was a scary thing for the team and not a great thing from a business perspective. You know, the store was reopened in less than two days. They replaced all the glass. The marketing team came out with this like fun campaign and activation when the store reopened. And then we just felt like, how do we turn what could have been really, really bad into something that is now empowering? Today, Ring Concierge is a multi-million dollar company with pieces ranging from $70 to seven figures. Fine jewelry is a serious purchase and people often hesitate, obviously, especially online. So what is your biggest tip for people who are looking to make a fine jewelry purchase but are a little nervous? I think our Instagram is a really great resource for that. We just show how these pieces actually look and function in everyday life and it's not just this fancy still image where you can't envision yourself actually wearing this piece. For other people watching who have an idea, what would be your best advice for that first step forward? My biggest advice would just be to take your time and figure out how to do it right instead of how do I do this as fast as possible and as big as possible. Isn't she incredible? I just love being surrounded by all the jewels. And since I last spoke to Nicole, Ring Concierge has opened a second location in New York City. They've sold more than 10,000 mini diamond tennis bracelets and have even designed custom jewelry for a celebrity wedding. Well, coming up next, you'll get to know some incredible women whose brands encourage us to show ourselves a little love. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. 
It's the best time of the morning. Time for our pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. Welcome back to She Made It. Our next entrepreneur has a passion for fashion. Designer Tanya Taylor is coloring the fashion industry with her bold vision of clothing turned art. But she is also taking her talents past the runway. Take a look. Hi. Okay. Before our interview even started, something about fashion designer Tanya Taylor caught my eye. I can't stop staring at your earrings that don't match purposely. Oh. And I think that probably epitomizes who you are. I've always kind of had a little bit of a playfulness in how I like to put things together. After studying finance at McGill University in Canada, Tanya moved to New York City, enrolling in Parsons School of Design. It made me see fashion as a really open-minded, kind of approachable kind of career that I could mix what I had learned in business school, but also be really creative. So I applied for an internship with Mary Kate and Ashley Olson when they started Elizabeth and James. They were my age. They were my idols growing up. I got the internship, ended up working with them for three years. What was the best nugget or piece of advice that you got during your time with the Olsons? It was 2009 to 2012. So during that time, fashion was male dominated. It was expensive or inexpensive. There wasn't this contemporary kind of price point. And I think what I learned the most is understand the customer, understand their lifestyle, like fall in love with them and just evolve designing for them. During Tanya's time at Elizabeth and James, she started to feel the urge to go off on her own. It was a lot of naivety and a lot of confidence at that time. Like I wanted to paint our prints. I wanted to bring art into the brand. It's interesting to me because you use two adjectives that usually don't go together, naive and confident. And I think the best example of being naive and confident is entrepreneurs. You don't know exactly what you're going to do, but you need to have a ton of confidence to be able to overcome all the roadblocks that you have every time you have them. So at the age of 24, she hired a consultant, raised a friends and family round of capital, and with one employee, launched her namesake brand, Tanya Taylor. Early days were bananas. I don't think there was like work hours. I remember setting up fittings at 11 p.m. and thinking it was early. Two years in, we were applying for the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund, which is a really prestigious competition in fashion. Anna Wintour, DVF, Jenna Lyons were all judges. And so you have to put together a plan of why you should be one of the top 10 brands in the US. And it's really hard to articulate that when you're at the beginning stages. So I was having trouble and all of a sudden go on Instagram and Michelle Obama had worn our dress that day. And it was one of those moments where you're like, ooh, I needed that. And we actually made it into the Vogue Fashion Fund, which was a big stepping stone for our brand. Today, Tanya Taylor Clothing is available in over 100 retail stores across the country, including Saks, Nordstrom, and Rent the Runway. The brand is known for its vibrant and colorful prints, most of which she and her team paint by hand. It's also size inclusive, carrying sizes zero to 22. A lot of people think like, oh, fashion is trivial, but it really does set the tone, not only how you feel about yourself, but decisions you make throughout the day. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And so I wanted women who have been excluded from the fashion conversation for years, they should be in it. They love fashion. They're so playful. They're so confident to have clothing that matches their personalities. What would be your best advice for people who are starting in this industry and young girls who are looking at you and saying, I want to do that too? I think understand the why. The industry requires some blinders and really kind of putting them on and feeling really confident with your own values and your own methods of how you want to design so that you don't get lost in the mix. Such incredible designs, right? And get this, Tanya's team also partnered with Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital to design custom curtains in their pediatric wing. And they donate headscarves to women and children on their first day of chemotherapy. And since being on the show last July, the brand is in over 100 retailers nationwide. And later this year, they'll be opening their very own retail space on Madison Avenue, a beautiful story all around. All right, now on to two amazing entrepreneurs with thriving beauty businesses. Both of these women had creative and innovative ideas, and let's just say they both nailed it. First up is Dr. Vivian Valenti, a woman who changed the game using her background in science to make at-home manicures quicker and more convenient. The result? Dazzle Dry. 
My name is Dr. Vivian Valenti. I've been a chemist for 58 years. I got my bachelor's degree in the Philippines and earned my doctorate at Penn State University in 1971. I'd served as an assistant professor of chemistry, a research scientist, and product developer in large companies when I realized I love solving problems by creating products that may seem mundane to some, but could be life-changing for others. Since I was 18, I have been wearing nail polish, but as I got older, I never found time to go to the salon. I made it then my mission to create a polish that dries in five minutes and lasts for weeks without using skin damaging chemicals and harmful UV rays. After years of trial and error, I created a four-step system with a flexible base coat that expands and contracts with the nails. I called it Dazzle Dry and brought it to market in 2007 with nine colors. Now we have over 170 and will sell a million bottles of product this year. It's amazing to hear that Dazzle Dry is a game changer for women and that's the formula for success. Now this is news I like to report. Dazzle Dry's Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales doubled from the year before. They have some exciting launches this year, including this Galentine's Day color collection. How cute is this? Now I'm going to introduce you to Rachel Upfell Glass, founder of Gloss Lab, who founded her brand from the idea that very few things feel as good as having your nails done. Take a look. I had been working in finance for nearly a decade when I had my first daughter. By the time I had my second, two years later, the commuting and traveling was a lot. As a working woman and a mom, I felt like manicures were an errand. When I saw a shoe shiner come into my male-dominated offices in the mornings, I'd always think, what if? So to push my idea forward, I went to nail tech training school and researched the salon industry. In 2018, using my own savings, I opened the first Gloss Lab location in New York City. Gloss Lab is a water-free, hygiene-first nail salon experience. It's also membership-based, with members paying a flat rate for monthly unlimited visits with online booking, cashless payment, and quality products. Today, we have 11 locations in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Maryland, and DC, with openings planned in Texas, Florida, and more. And we're even launching into retail products. I'm proud to say our customers are in good hands at Gloss Lab. And Gloss Lab is now up to 20 locations across the country with salons in places like Florida, Texas, D.C., and Connecticut. And all of the products used at Gloss Lab locations are now available for purchase on site and online. Well, coming up, four women-owned small businesses that add color, encouragement, and a little calm to our lives. I can't wait for you to meet these superstars when we come right back. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, on Lester. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> we begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Welcome back. I now have even more brands from female-founded companies that I'm so excited to share with you on my She Made It It list. They're fabulous businesses that will brighten up your life in the most important place, your home. 
Okay, let's start with Masu wrapping paper. Founder Libby Hample knows that wrapping paper with glitter, sequins, or certain coatings are not recyclable and was looking for paper that was 100% able to be recycled. Recyclable, made in America, and had great designs. So she combined her pattern design skills and values to create premium, eco-friendly wrapping paper with these playful, beautiful designs. Massey wrapping paper is 100% recycled and recyclable with a velvety smooth finish on both sides. It's the only premium coated, 100% recycled sheet made in America. And the brand will soon be expanding into greeting cards with 30 new designs. And how sweet is this? The name Masu comes from two Japanese words for giving. How appropriate. All right, business number two, Pretty Peacock Papery. It's a small business that provides lighthearted and fun stationery for people who are looking for love in their life. After founder Natalie Henry Charles had a near-death experience delivering her daughter, she decided that life is too short not to celebrate all the happy moments. After a lengthy recovery process, Natalie was gifted an art class at a local museum, which sparked her idea for a business. All of Pretty Peacock's papery products include funny, lighthearted, and uplifting messages like, I love you more than donuts, kinda. Make yourself proud and little girls with dreams turned into women with vision. Really a beautiful story. All right, look at these guys. Next up, Huggimals. They are new best invention winning line of high quality weighted stuffed animals for kids and adults that hug you back to lower stress, bring calm, and help with sleep. Founder Marina created Huggimals for her own anxiety and trouble sleeping. Like many people, she found weighted blankets too hot and smothering, and her partner Mike was sick of her using his arm as a miniature weighted blanket. So with the input from dozens of doctors and therapists, she created Huggimals. At four and a half pounds, they are heavier than most weighted plush toys, and their weight is distributed, so it actually feels like they are hugging you back. Poiti Granity founded Summer Space Studio in 2017 after she tried a challenge to create one new paper flower a day for 100 days. She fell in love with the combination of paper crafts and colors. That's when Poi founded Summer Space. They create ready-to-ship bouquets and custom flower orders and hosts live paper flower-making workshops both in person and online. How beautiful are these? Well, that's all for this episode of She Made It. Thanks for watching. And remember to shop these small businesses, scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen, or head over to today.com slash shop. I'm Joel Martin, and of course, I'll see you next time. Love is in the air, and there's nothing more romantic on Valentine's Day than cooking an elegant meal for someone you love. All right, now we know just the man to help us do it, Michelin star chef Eric Repair. He's the owner of La Bernadette, which was named, by the way, the number one restaurant what? in the world in the world for the second year. And at our tasting table, we have our bachelorettes, Chloe and Lisa. Hi, guys. You are in for such a treat. I know. Eric, I mean, we cannot just state enough just how amazing you are. So thank you thank for you hanging so with us. Thank we you. appreciate and it. And also, it's we love this idea of kind of a simple, not heavy Valentine's Day meal. Yes, something yes. simple so you have time to be with your loved one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. All right, so let's talk scallops. Yes, so we have some scallops, which are here. Can you all believe, I don't know if you all realize, no. but they, when you eat a scallop, big. It comes this from this, is baby. How it comes. Yes. The scallop is in. Can I open it? Or it's is hard. It? You, you can well, try. You need a knife. I could, I oh, could show you, you with a knife, but oh. it takes a bit of time. Okay, okay. let's not bother. Let's, yeah. <laughs> so they come up. Basically, what you end up is out of this big scallop, you have this. something like that, which I is the muscle. I know that's how they came. I and like these baby scallops. And those are the best scallops, uh, which are much smaller. Uh, yeah. Those ones come from Nantucket. The difference in between the big scallop yeah. and the small scallops, they're very sweet, those ones. Oh, they're the small sugary. ones? Ooh, yeah. I love very a sugary sweet. scallop. They're very nice. You're cooking with things that are kind of romantic, like ginger yeah. and well, lemon Well, we have grass. ginger. So to, to use ginger, you can peel the ginger with a spoon like that. With a spoon? And, and oh. Yes, and you can see the, the skin comes out. I mean, it's so simple. It's, it's so simple, right? Mm -hmm. So we, you can do that. We use lemongrass. So to get a lot of the flavor yeah, from the yeah, lemongrass, you, you do like that with your knife. Oh, using the so back side, the, not the, the sharp side. side. And yeah. then you slice oh. it like this. Ah. And when you slice it like this, you have all the flavor. The aroma? Very fresh. Now, why so ginger and lemongrass? Because it's just... Because mm, it's very smell, fragrant. Smell, smell. Oh, my smell gosh. It. It's like very fragrant. So I have some lemongrass mm. here. Mm. We're putting it in, in some butter, a little bit of butter, some ginger. Yes. yes. I have some kaffir limes. 
So they, they are from the lemon tree. I see. And they ah. bring a lot of flavor. Mm. We put them inside. It's very, you can it, smell like it. That. If you don't oh, yeah, have if it. Yeah, if you do it like that, you can smell. If you, don't, if you don't have the leaves, you can use the peel of a lime. Yeah. And you sweat it like that. Then you bring some muscle juice. What, what muscle kind juice? of oh, muscle oh. juice? Muscle juice. And, and where do you get that? Just in the store? You can buy clam juice or you uh, can make your own uh, muscle juice. Okay. Yes. And that will be the base for the sauce. It's going gonna, it's gonna to boil. Okay, now we I get have to some, the scallop. some scallops, so it's very easy. You take a scallop, mm -hmm. you slice it in three mm. pieces. Now, Look why do you that. slice it thin? You just think more delicious. It's more delicious. It's easier to cook as well. Yeah, yeah. We are going to arrange it now in a plate. So this is raw, Eric? Those are raw, yes. Okay, so you're arranging it in the plate raw? You, you put raw scallops in the plate. Okay. Uh, you present them nicely as a okay. like a flower, for instance. Yes, for Valentine's that, Day. For Valentine's Look how sweet Day, right? that is. I know. A bit of salt and pepper. Okay. Mm. Like that. Then they go to the oven. Oh, you can put the plate. So you in put the, the oven? plate in the oven? Yes, but Wait. you put the plate in the oven until the scallops are warm. So oh, basically, just warm. it's okay. like 30 seconds, 40 ah. seconds. My sauce. It's boiled with all the ingredients, the aromatics. So I'm going to strain it ah, like that. So that's what's hot. Is that what and cooks it? Yes. Yeah. And then we're going to go. OK. We're going to add a bit of butter in it. I love how you do. Mm -hmm. Eric. Like this. Mm. We whisk it. We could really listen to Eric all day. I know. Couldn't? Yes, we could. And so you it takes put a bit of time lime. to incorporate the butter in it. OK. And then once you get this sauce all finished up, do you pour it on top? Is that yes, what you do? Yes, that's what you ah. do. So what you do exactly. Wait, you look at our bachelorettes, Eric. What do you think? No, they're oh, sorry. We already started. They're done. Yeah. Yeah. Is it it's so good? Amazing. Too good. Delicious. You put a bit of lime juice on your scallop. Does like that, that help cook it, too? Yeah. It, yes, yes like but it's already, it's already cooked. Oh. Then you put uh -huh. some chives. See? Yes. And then you add your special sauce. At the, at the end, yes. you add the sauce. Eric, does it ever so get old having the number one restaurant in the world? I mean, <laughs> seriously. Uh, you see every white hair? <laughs> <laughs> so it's worth it, is what you're saying. It's definitely worth wow. it. Wow. Well, it's, we're privileged then that you're here you with us, Eric. you pour the very hot sauce on top. Oh, and that cooks and it And that through. cooks it. And that cooks it also as All well. Right. And you have a delicious dessert that I know that the ladies are going to try and enjoy with a little this gold on really top. This is really special. Oh, thank it's you. A okay. Chocolate, it's a chocolate um, souffle inside the mm. cocoa pot. Mm. And then, of course, we really have Eric. Delicious. They are, they mm. are you should get good. these recipes. Thank mm. you, Eric. Eric. Go to today.com. I can't handle you, Eric. Slash food. Wait, hold on. Wait. I want to get in here. I okay. can't help it. Happy Valentine's Happy Day. Valentine's. If you're scrambling for a way to show that special someone how much you care, we've got you covered. Martha Stewart is here with some ideas for DIY sweet treats, all from the latest issue of Martha Stewart Living. Martha, before we get to the cooking, your weekend, you were at the Oscars. Oh, I had so much fun. How was it? Was it? Oh, it was so fun. You looked amazing. Thank you. Thank How you. was that process getting all dolled up and going out for uh, the Oscars? Well, it takes a little while. I'm, I'm, I'm not a movie star, so I'm not. Well, you uh, look like one there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, look, it looks nice. Wow. But I wore a short little dress, which got attention because everybody else was in long dresses. Why did you like, why did you go for the short? I just liked short dresses. You had a horseback ride. Let it show, show off the, the... The gams. The gams. <laughs> what are gams? Legs. Oh, nice. Okay. Legs. All right, well, your gams are looking good. You're going to make some sweet treats for us. Yes. What are we going to, what are we going to make? We have so many no delicious bake? things. No bake. No oven. These are most delicious. No bake chocolate peanut butter uh, cup bars. I love that combination. And, you know, people, yeah, I know. People really love it. So what you do is melt some uh, bittersweet chocolate with four tablespoons of butter, six ounces of bittersweet chocolate. Get that all melted. Mm -hmm. Then in another bowl, mix one and a three quarters cups of peanut butter. A smooth mm -hmm. peanut butter is best. And one stick of butter. You want to mix that this together. This is in a separate bowl. Yeah, mix those together. Okay. And it should be at room temperature, so it really oh, that mixes, mixes together easily. nicely. Yeah. yeah. And then add powdered sugar. And I like to sift the powdered sugar, two cups. So mix that all together. That's the base. That's the peanut butter part. Okay. Okay. So that gets all mixed in. It takes a little while to get that Work in. Work it all in. So we have it already smoothed Thank in God. a parchment lined okay. square. This is like a brownie pan. Mm -hmm. You know, when you make your brownies, you use this kind of pan. Yep. The, the, and was this put in the refrigerator or yeah, anything? This, yeah. Chill that. Then <coughs> add just beautiful, that melted chocolate, yep. that bittersweet uh, chocolate mixed with butter right on top. And that makes that smooth, beautiful top. Let that cool a little bit because mm -hmm. it's still warm. And you can just tilt the pan and get, get
get it all evenly layered. See who's your uh, who was your date at the Oscars, by the way? Oh, I had a great date, Douglas Friedman. Who is Douglas Friedman? Oh, he's this handsome, handsome photographer that I that I is like. Is he your Valentine? No, oh, I okay. wish, but mm. too bad. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. See, look how Look at that picture. Is. That's fantastic. Isn't that pretty? That looks like a bourbon ad. <laughs> yeah, it was a little smoky inside. Yeah, that's cool. That was another elevator picture. Oh. Then you just dollop on top another little bit of peanut butter, just like a quarter of a cup of peanut butter, mm -hmm. mixed with, again, a little bit of room temperature butter. Dollop that on top mm. of the... Chocolate. Why these little dollops? This is just part of well, it? Yeah, this makes the pretty marks on top, okay. and you can make these little dollops up with a skewer. Just pull it like this. Do you think Douglas was checking out your gams? Oh, of course. He, he, had a, he had a great time. <laughs> he was fun. Um, but we had, um, and all the, all the movie stars were hanging yeah. out. Well, you know was... all those people anyway. Huh? Were what? you shocked when Parasite won Best Picture? Were you there for that moment? Or? Well, it was weird because that's not my favorite movie, but, I, but you know, I, I can see why it won. It was, it was it a was shocker, though. A shocker. All right, what's okay, next? Now, chocolate caramel truffles. Oh, delicious. Okay, and this is, again, everybody loves chocolate candies. So the chocolate truffles is easy to make. Four tablespoons of butter, mm -hmm. a can of condensed milk, and some heavy cream. Dump in uh, this, again, unsweetened, unsweetened chocolate. chocolate. Three ounces of that. Yep, three tablespoons of cocoa powder. One teaspoon of vanilla. Yep, and then you can whisk that together. Okay. Then you have to let that chill. And you get a nice hard. See this? How it gets yep. nice. And Take hard. it off the heat once it's mixed. Yeah, once let it's it. all mixed, and then just use an ice cream scoop like this. Wow, it's like a ganache. Yeah, it is. You're see, you know what you're talking about, and let these little balls chill, and then roll them with your hands into into balls like this. All right. Yeah, that gets very nice little stout. balls getting, of chocolate. Delicious. They're getting a little sticky out here. Okay. But here, I'll lift this up, and you just going to roll them in the right and sprinkles. Get oh. your and you can buy all these different colors of sprinkles now, at the cake decorating store. You know what I would do? I would get a little of the confection sugar on my fingers, and maybe that'll act as a. It might help. You know, a little roll like that. And but then you're gonna. Yeah. No, well, then it's, it's not round. Yeah, no, yeah, it's but it's nice. Sure. Yeah, roll it around. Yeah. You'll get it done. Take that, Douglas Look Friedman. at that. <laughs> All right, what's next? Okay, hot so chocolate? that's that. And then hot chocolate. Everybody loves hot chocolate. Yep. But what makes this hot chocolate, which is just milk and cocoa powder. Gotta be milk. A little sugar, a little salt. Okay. Salt in your, in your hot salt, chocolate. A little salt, huh? Yeah, I love. Uh, You're going to add I a little, little, little more chocolate? Yep, add a little bit of, um, of again, bittersweet chocolate. Yep. And then I made my own homemade marshmallows. Okay. And cut these marshmallows out. Use Could you just buy like fluff or something if you wanted to do it quick? Or well, you, gotta you make can, but then you don't get the, look at this the hearts, gorgeous. Yeah. Look how gorgeous that is. That says I love you they in hold the up nicest well, too. possible way. They do into your hot, delicious chocolate. See, look how pretty. Are these adults or are these? These uh, are these are well. Anybody can have these because tastes good. No, I'm, wow, that's delicious. Yeah, oh my gosh, delicious. And then we show you how in the in the magazine we show you how to make the templates for these beautiful bows and these beautiful boxes. Right. And inside the boxes, my, my grandson loves Liverpool soccer team. Okay. All the swag from Liverpool. Oh, He's getting that box. We could put some of the chocolates and things in there Jude as well. Jude has to. long hair. She's never cut. Oh, she gets that. hair ornaments. Look at Kevin's into licorice. Look at that. Oh, Kevin loves licorice. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. And then my daughter. Well, oh, she's dried yep, fruit. Dry, it's the healthy at, one. Look at those gorgeous dried Beautiful, fruits. though. Yeah. Beautiful. So uh, Valentine's Day doesn't have to be stressful. It can be just full of love and happiness. I love the no-bake part of it, too. It's more yeah, crafty that way. Martha, is. thank you so much. You get all these recipes and ideas. Go to today.com slash food. Tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. You get one beautiful Someday. life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. You get one beautiful life to live. 
Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. It's the best time of the morning. Time for pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. We are whipping up the ultimate Valentine's dessert table with the help of our awesome Bake Squad. Bake Squad's oh. here. Season two of their hit Netflix show. It's out right now. Milk Bar founder Christina Tosi is the host with today's former head food stylist <laughs> Ashley Hope woo, woo. and Maya Camille Broussard competing to see whose dessert will be chosen for someone's special day. Love it. I love watching Bake Squad. You guys are so amazing mm -hmm. and creative. And Christina, you know I worship you. We're making red velvet mm. something. Tell us about this. Well, I knew you were going to be my Valentine's Day buddy, inspired here. So I brought your favorite cake, the I red velvet cake. Love it. We make these incredible cake truffles and layer cake for only this time of year at Milk Bar. And cake truffles for me are like the easiest hack if you want to like do a little Bake Squad moment at home. Um, they're basically cake that we mix all of the ingredients of red velvet so some milk some red uh some red food coloring some chocolate chips some cream cheese all the good stuff once that gets mushed together mm -hmm. it gets scooped out okay and then we're gonna do the real pastry okay, chef so it. these are little rounds of chocolate cake okay you're gonna dunk yours in white chocolate mm, okay. i'm gonna dunk mine they get mm -hmm. rolled. I have a little oh, oops, oh, yeah, fork for you. Okay, look at me. Great. And then they get rolled around in a little mm. red velvet crumb. Oh my gosh. The move at home, once they get rolled around, is to take something super simple like a craft cone. Oh, oh coat it this. in chocolate. You got it. So that you have a nice little chocolate cone. Mm. And then you take these brilliant, super simple little toothpicks. Yeah. And you have like a party favor oh, in cute. any oh, size cute. you want. Cute. If you're scared of baking and you want us mm -hmm. to do the baking, we got you next level. at milkbarstore.com. Oh you can do it in any flavor you want. I brought you the red velvet. You did, I know, and you, the truffles are my well legit done, favorite, favorite, favorite thing. So, so this is inspo number one from Bake Squad for my Valentine's job. Day. Yes. There's more. Love we'll it. move on to number two, <laughs> Ashley, of course. Former That's head stylist, what's it like being back here? I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of cool <laughs> being on the other side. Yeah. If I do miss working here, yes, it was a great time, mm. so. What are we making this morning? All right, today we're making this mosaic cake. Mm. A mosaic yeah. cake. Yes, check that out. Oh, that's hot on the Yeah, wow. something beautiful, but it's honestly like super simple. And we're going to do it with box cake here. But okay. I like to spruce it up. If you just replace the oil with some melted butter, the milk with, uh, or the water with the milk, you get a richer, deeper flavor. Okay. And with all these three colors, we're going to do a cool hack of just doing everything in one tray using only one bowl because I don't oh, like dishes. Smart. So you kind of like visually split the batter and oh, stir. Oh, so that's why we use the foil. That's here. right. Yeah. So you have these foil dividers. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. We're just kind of, I like doing this with frosting too. It helps all the colors kind of stay in the same family. So anyways, you'll get a pink color or whatever color you want for the middle. And that then of course red. becomes that. Exactly. So then you keep adding color to the rest oh, of the batter to help deepen hack. it some. And when it bakes, you have your foil that's going to keep it separated, okay. and you come out with these three separate cakes. And wow. that's it. And between the, the layers, you have some frosting there? That's now? right, yeah. So we're just going to cut out some circles. This is a great project to do with Thank friends, you. Mm -hmm. you know, with your girls on Galentine's mm -hmm. Day, with your partner, however you All want. Right. There's plenty of cake here. I want a copy. How yeah. Is it? <laughs> you got it? Yummy? Tasty? Yes. All right. Here's oh, the trick so here. Oh, yeah, we got to see how you get this. Oh, that's players. a light cook. Mm. Okay. Here's oh. the trick here. You cut your circles in half, mm -hmm. put a little bit of frosting right there in the center, yeah. and you're going to then piece these together. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Oh, got it. Got it. And you're just going to follow that up. same. That's right. Hey, brilliant. Stack it up. Brilliant. All Mosaic right. cake. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Miss Maya Camille. Good to see you, honey. Good How to are see you? you? How are you? Great. Okay, so we're making a pie, but not your ordinary pie. What are you cooking? This is a petite s'more pies, and it only takes eight to ten minutes to bake. So wow, okay. Nice and quick. So what you got here? So I have a very frothy granulated sugar and egg yolk mixture. Uh -huh. So we're going to mix that for about a minute until okay. it is nice and light and fluffy. Yeah. And then I have melted chocolate, oh which we're going to pour bring in. It. Look Ooh. at that. Ooh. Yes, Ooh. there we go. <laughs> Come on. So I always Ooh. recommend melting your chocolate over mm -hmm. a double boiler in order to avoid okay. um, burning it. And then once that is combined, yeah. then we're going to take our 
flower or CF, yeah. and um, we're going to look at that. What is sift that? Sift our flower, flower our right all-purpose flower in there, okay. and we sift this to avoid clumps. Okay, I'm gonna and Then we have this, this mixture, and I have ramekins with uh, <laughs> brown sugar, oh, thank you. buttery graham cracker. <laughs> okay. Press. Then so I'm you're just going to scoop that, that in here. In. Look at this. Scoop this in here. Stop. And then you're going to just pop this into the oven for eight to ten minutes. Oh my God. And then, oh, it just melts Melting in your mouth. Melting chocolatey. Pop it with marshmallows and I've got voila. Some more. Quick and easy and what? delicious and oh. decadent. Oh my God. That's good. Mm. Next you level. Mean. Next level. <laughs> Ladies, thank you all so much. This That's is terrific. Good. This is amazing. Great show. Catch season two of The Bake Squad. It's now streaming on Netflix. NBC News. Streaming free now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels What's the latest like. Film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Namas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. It's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. Do you want to impress your sweetie this Valentine's Day? You cannot go wrong with Key Lime Pie. And Grand Baby Cakes founder and our pal Jocelyn De Delk Adams is here to share the sweet and simple recipe. We don't care if it's winter. We want Key Lime Pie. <laughs> key Lime Pie! Yes! yes. <laughs> okay, we love Key Lime Pie, and you're saying cook it all year long. Who cares? Bake it. Oh my gosh, we make it for Christmas, we make it for Thanksgiving, like instead of like the traditional pumpkin, you know, we also have this next to the sweet potato pie, okay? Because my dad absolutely adores it, so I've gotta make it year round. All right, the best part I always think of a key lime pie is the crust. Yes, the crust has gotta be on top. Give me a graham so get cracker. Us started. Oh my God, yes, I agree. So I've got some graham cracker crumbs. Mm. You can also just buy some graham crackers and grind them up in your food processor. I've got a little sugar because you know we're getting sweet here. Mm -hmm. And then I've got some melted butter. Mm. And I'm just going to do a quick whisk and get those all combined. And that's our crust. How easy was that, easy. right? Easy. Yes. So I'm going to mix that all together, let that kind of become like wet sand, mm -hmm. like that kind of consistency. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to pour that right into our oh, pie plate, which mm. I've also we like sprayed with a nonstick spray. Simple. Yeah, non spray. just okay. get that in there. Okay. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then I'm just going to start patting down. You can pat down with your hands. You can also use like a measuring mm. cup and also get that really smooth in there. Uh -huh. This is what I like to yeah, do. So easy. it looks a little bit, you know, more professional and too how you, on the side. Oh, there, you get it up by pushing it up like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just start pushing it up the sides. Okay, yep. so we've got our crust. Yeah. Yeah. to bake it first. Is that true? Yeah, so I like to bake mine for about maybe like 10 minutes just to kind of get like a nice kind of golden color on the outside. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of sets it up a little bit more too. Okay. So we're going to pretend like we baked this one. Okay. And we're going to get to our filling like really quickly. You can you just get this together. I know. Okay. Hey, speed, <laughs> speed here. We got to play the TV game, so we got to go fast. 
Okay. So I'm going to get to our filling. I've got some sweetened condensed milk here. Mm, I'm going to add that right that. into, oh, yeah, Thick, right? I oh, love thick. the hums. Like, oh, uh, thick. Mm. It's Love thick, that. it's luscious, it's mm. creamy. This is like that secret weapon in your key lime pie that gives it that beautiful, luscious consistency. Okay. And I've got some egg yolks. Mm -hmm. We're yolk. going to skip the, the whites. We're going to just the egg yolks. going to make it super rich and delicious and actually like a nice moist texture. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add in just two more ingredients. Of course, our key lime juice. Yes. How much, Grab how much, this at where the you grocery getting, store. You, you can buy key yeah. lime juice at the grocery yeah. store? Easily, right on the shelves. Or if you want to turn this into like a lemon, you know, baked pie, oh, you can easily yeah. use lemon juice too. Yeah. Can I ask a dumb it's question? It's great that way too. Is, is key yeah. lime juice different lime than juice? lime juice? Is it just lime juice? It totally is. No, it is. There are different key limes. They're like the little small limes that you'll see, those specialty limes, versus like those bigger limes that you see in the grocery so store. When so you, the key limes, it would take you a long time to juice all those. You, you have to way. look for the actual key lime juice. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Key lime juice. Got you want to grab that instead okay. of the lime juice. Okay. That thank you. you. Thank you. And then finally, just a little vanilla. Oh, yummy. And I'm just going to whisk all that together until it combines and it takes like a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. oh, and then how do you yeah. make it green? You Is don't it make green? it green. So when oh, you, you see people, people with like the green, green? Yeah. ones, yeah. they've added That's like food coloring, food coloring oh. to that. Oh. Yeah, that is I not that. like a traditional, like real key Did you lime highlight. Key? We don't play around with that. I oh. sort of like it just like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is how you do it, right? This is the consistency. <laughs> this is the look. This is what you want. And we're going to pour oh, that oh, right oh, oh, into. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, look at, yeah. look at, beautiful. Look at that. I just like to watch yeah. the pouring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I could lick that. Oh. I know it has it eggs in it. It is kind of seductive. It okay, is beautiful. Now what well, do I you mean, do? hey, we got Valentine's Day coming up, right? And you bake that, and baby? And then if you. Yeah, you bake this baby. If you have like a deeper pan, just maybe double the filling. Yeah. Totally mm -hmm. up to you. And then if you want to do this beautiful variation that I have here, this is my raspberry Ooh, pretty. key lime pie. Wow. It's gorgeous, right? And, and it you just really add a little pops. whipped cream on top? Yeah, I just add a little whipped cream on top. Here, I just use some melted raspberry jam and I kind of just spoon it over. Mm, make it marble. Just drizzle. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then and it just adds something special to it. Or you can bake as how, is. How long do you bake and then it, I just kinda Jocelyn? Just, uh, you bake for about 10, 15 That's minutes easy. max. Easy. And then it comes out like this. Can we oh. see? There's our, there's our Jocelyn. traditional Jocelyn. key thank lime pie. You. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Grand baby cakes rocks. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, Jocelyn. And yes, for, thank you. Thank you. Mm. And for this recipe, head to today.com slash food. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love ride in the I way. Love ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Yeah, I love you too. <laughs> I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Oh, welcome back. They say the way to a person's heart is through their stomach, and that certainly rings true 
on Today Food this morning. Yes, we are going to make Valentine's easy, we hope, with some mail order gifts you can ship straight to the doors of the ones you adore. Mm -hmm. And one more reason to love them, they're all from small businesses. Food and lifestyle expert Alejandra Ramos joins us with some creative ideas. Alejandra, we love that you're helping out the small businesses. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. I, the first is, well, it's Lagusta's Luscious Chocolate <laughs> Orange Heart. Tell us. Yes, Lagusta Slushes are based in New Paltz, New York. Women owned 100% ethical ingredients and everything they do is a work of art. Taste and looks just as good. I love these blood orange hearts. So it's blood orange caramel, white chocolate ganache, dark chocolate ganache, and a candied orange on top. Amazing. Love it. A lot of people are wondering uh, about a date night possibly over, yeah. uh, over Valentine's Day. And you've got a kind of a cute uh, picnic box. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So this is from Zingerman's in Ann Arbor. They're a Midwestern fave, and I think everyone around the country should love them. So this is a French picnic box. It's got everything you need for a French picnic. You've got the cornichons, the sausage, cheese, a gorgeous loaf of bread, even some chocolates mm. from Angelina in Paris. Just add a picnic blanket, bottle of wine, and you've got your date night sorted. Mm. Alejandro, if, if I'm looking to send something to an entire family that, that I, yeah. I love dearly, what do you have for that? I got something for you. Daisy Cakes makes the most incredible layer cakes. I love her Valentine's cake. It's strawberry and white chocolate. Four layer cakes, they sent, they're sent to you frozen. They thaw to perfection, or you can even just thaw mm. a slice or two at a time. You know, I'm not, not judging. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alejandro, we, you, we, you've got churros and yes. ice cream on the list. Oh, yeah. And oh, not just any kind of churros. These are heart-shaped churros from La New Yorkina here in New York. They also come with the dipping sauces, mm. the cinnamon sugar, Oof. and ice cream. That sounds yeah. delicious. Uh, I want. All right, so let's good. talk molten lava cake. Mm, you okay. had me at hello, yes. Alejandra. <laughs> Hello, hello, molten lava cakes from Hot Cakes in Seattle. And these are just the chocolate that you know and love. They also come in strawberry, peanut butter, s'mores. They even have vegan and gluten-free versions so that everybody can enjoy. They're shipped to you frozen. You pop them in the oven 15 minutes and you've got delicious restaurant dessert in your own home. All right, Alejandra, I know a lot of folks would love this. How about a delicious bread basket? Ooh, can you imagine yes. Ooh, that yes. came to your house? <laughs> For the carb lover, Bread Basket NYC curates these bread baskets with baked goods from all the best bakeries and pastry shops. This is their love basket, which is a special for Valentine's. I love the little heart on the sourdough bowl. You've got little rolls, pink and white cookies, not black and white, chocolate, and this gorgeous little chocolate sprinkle cake. Alejandro, what about a coffee lover? Let's, let's say that you've, you've got all a coffee right. lover that you're shopping for. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so for the one you love, a latte, Bean Box oh. has amazing. <laughs> you like that, right? I did too. <laughs> Bean Box does a selection of coffees from around the world. This is their around the world sampler. You get 16 coffees from different countries and from all the best coffee growing regions oh, in like the that. world. Uh, they come with little caramels too. They also have subscriptions and they even have a chocolate and coffee pairing box. Plus, if your partner is a tea person, they have coffee and teas, you know, for That's those great. opposite attract kind of couples. All right. Some really cute ideas. And if you want to, thank you, Alejandra. Thank if you, you want to get these shipped to your loved ones in time yeah. for Valentine's Day, go to today.com slash shop. All the info's there. Hey guys, welcome to The Boost. It's your daily dose of positivity and hopefully a boost of happiness. All right, let's get us started. Donna Farrison explores the science of happiness and some simple tips to maximize it in your daily life. The way we spend our time and how we approach our time has a significant influence on how happy we are. In her new book, Happier Hour, author Cassie Holmes offers up ways to make each hour in your day feel more fulfilling. The thing we can control is how we spend our time. Cassie gave me some tips and exercises from the book to help bring my attention to the joy right in front of me. The first exercise was to do a random act of kindness. I just met Ken at the airport. I bought him a coffee. He was in line behind me. Cheers. Cheers. Kindness. Pass it around. I have to tell you, this changed me. And then I sat down for my four hour flight, initially had my earbuds in, but then for three out of the four hours, I ended up talking and having a conversation with my seatmate and we became friends. And the sense of connection that comes from even 
an interaction with a stranger, mm -hmm. the sort of sense of belonging. Yes, it's with close others, but it's also the extent to which we feel connected to our communities and humanity. Next up, Cassie suggested I experience awe. I spent some time in Wyoming, and I was horseback riding, which I love doing. Come on, monk. These sights are truly spectacular. But I was also so awe-inspired by the mountains, the view, the fresh air, the stargazing. When you go into nature, and you are inspired and filled with awe. What that does, it expands your perspective and expands your sense of time that you then feel less limited. You're not concerned about your schedule. But I actually felt like time was sitting still for a little bit in the best way. One tip Cassie gave me was to make my most joyful activities, like spending time with my parents, no phone zones. I love having morning coffee with my mom. I love going on walks with my dad. And I'm always snapping pictures, documenting, trying to make these memories. What you helped me realize was making the memories is also through just being present, not having to capture it or document. These are your most joyful activities. And carving those out, There's making them cows. no phone zones, it's really important because it not only affects your enjoyment, but the person that you're with, your mom and your dad, know that you're fully present. My biggest takeaway is I've identified the activities that boost my mood when I'm feeling down. And if we can control our own happiness, then that is one step towards improving it. Okay, I loved this. There are yeah. so many good yeah. exercises in this book. One that I just want everyone to know is the bundling strategy. Mm -hmm. So basically, when you're doing something, a boring chore, something that yeah. seems time-consuming, mm -hmm. time bundle a happy, joyful activity within it. I know you do this when you're cleaning, yeah, glass like, music, music, or like if you're missing doing an activity, mm -hmm you know, put on a podcast yeah. that talks mm -hmm. about that activity. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, maybe mm -hmm. call a friend, that social connection. It's Figure so out true. what brings you joy and then incorporate that. By the way, I love that. And I no, think we I all do. talk about a random act of kindness, but yeah. when did you last do one? Yeah, really. Like, we say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did but she say do one a day? One a she didn't say, she didn't put like a time limit on it, which I yeah. like too, because the whole part of why I loved th these exercises in this book was that it didn't feel like a chore or a task. Yeah, it really must. felt like a way to yeah. implement yes. it kind Day. of authentically um, into yeah. your life. Whenever it felt when right. When you feel yeah. like it. Thank you, Donna. All right, talk about acts of kindness. One teacher is changing lives by giving away one million books. Jenna Bush Hager caught up with the self-titled book lady. You kind of have two names, right? My name is Jennifer, or Miss Jennifer as well as the book lady. Why the book lady? Because I've given away 91,900 books in the last four, almost five years. Jennifer Williams is not your average elementary school teacher. For more than 30 years, her passion for reading and writing can be seen throughout her classrooms and community, even on display within letters her class wrote to my grandfather as he was leaving the White House in 1993. So some of these are hilarious. Dear Mr. Bush, we saw a picture of the White House. It is big. Do you have a cleaning lady? But it's your fierce determination to get one million books to students, to adults, to any reader that has endeared her to so many. How come you have such a lofty goal? I know personally the value of reading, the ability to read, um, the magic of stories. I wanted to make sure that my little town <laughs> has books. Jennifer's love for literature began early. Her mom was a school librarian and read to her kids every single day until they went to college. When Jennifer became a teacher and started working with children, she recognized immediately what a difference reading makes. There's no denying as a teacher, I can spend five minutes with a kid I've never met before. And when you talk to them, the way they carry themselves, the way they answer questions, there's a very different countenance between a child who has ready access to books or just, you know, someone to share stories with them versus someone who doesn't. When tutoring students, they begged to keep the books she'd read to them. Recognizing their need, she started giving books to every child, every time. To this day, the mission Miss Jennifer lives by, no one who wants a book leaves without one. 
from novels left by neighbors to spending thousands of our own money for more stories. Danville's Book Lady makes sure little free libraries never go empty, school bookshelves are filled, and even keeps books in her car in case she meets a new friend. Jennifer also started the Second Chance Book Club at the Danville City Jail for Women. Two years in, the club is on its 59th book. And why did you title it the Second Chance Book Club? I think by the time you end up in jail, most people have already told you what you've done wrong. I wanted them to always feel like there was always a second chance. Here's to 30,000 more. Jennifer has chronicled her journey to one million books in a Facebook group she calls Joy of Reading. And by the looks of it, the book lady has no plans of slowing down anytime soon. You have calculated how long it'll take you to donate one million books. At my current rate, I will be 92. <laughs> But you're not going to stop. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to stop as long as I can do it. Wow. wow. Amazing. Oh, that's amazing. She, okay, guys, joining us live from her school in Chatham, Virginia. Can we say good oh. morning to Mrs. Jennifer Williams? Good morning. Oh, and a couple okay, hundred everybody. of the students and teachers at Chatham good Elementary. Oh, Mrs. Cool. Williams, kids, good morning. <laughs> That's awesome. Mrs. Williams, I, you know, you were talking about your mom and how she inspired you. She passed away. Um, but what do you think she would be thinking in this moment, looking at you and all this success? I really, really hope that she would be proud. I hope that she would know that what she started in me keeps going through me to other people. Well, I love you. We had such a bond. And you know Thank what? You. We want to celebrate you. We can't just share your story without helping in some way. So we have a couple surprises. Let's yeah. do it. OK. So we know that you love to stock okay. those little free libraries. Am I right, Mrs. Williams? Yes. OK. Yes. Well, guess what? When we told this, your story to the nonprofit organization, they thought you should have your own little free library. Kids, can you reveal the library? What? There it is. Yay! Oh, Yay! Look at that. I, I hope you can Surprise. read the plaque. Surprise. Cool. Mrs. Williams, the plaque reads read Jennifer plaque. Williams Library, a.k.a. the book lady. <laughs> what do you think? Thank you. Sweet. You like it? I love it. I love oh. it. Awesome. Yeah, okay, well, great. Mrs. Williams, awesome. that's not it, okay? Penguin Random House heard about your story, and they also want to contribute to your goal. So Principal Wanda Carter is there to help us with the next part. Take it away, Dr. Carter. Oh, all right, kids. We're okay. going to count back. Three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> that's a lot of books. Even for a book lady, Penguin has donated 10,000 books right. to Little Free Library. 1,200 are for you to continue to stock those libraries around town, and they're sending it around 8,800 more to Little Free Library to be distributed nationwide. So now your goal to help folks across the country is complete. That's over $130,000 worth of books. And by the way, I don't know if you can do that. You can do the math. You're incredible. You do math fast. Guess what? That makes your milestone of a hundred thousand books donated. Yeah. Coming up, a company that is giving away its products, all for a very good cause. Stay with us. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day, we start our morning so you can take on yours. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, welcome to today. 
I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. Welcome back. A Minnesota mill has been in the blanket business since 1865, and their latest initiative helps keep their community cozy. Joe Fryer has that story. At Fairbow Mill, a blanket is so much more than a billowing scrap of fabric. Making one is a 22-step process. What is this? That is wool. Wool. Supervisor Rafael Medina showed us how clouds of wool are dyed and dried in industrial size machines. So this is a little bigger than the dryers in our houses, right? Definitely. Gradually, they're shaped into strands of strong yarn that are woven into cuddly. I make them fluffy. Colorful coverings. What do you think when you see the final product coming together? I think it's like a painting. It looks like a painting being made elaborate operation that recently added a 23rd step. You see, many of the blankets are now delivered to shelters. Oh, I like the colors. That are helping young people who are experiencing homelessness. For us to be able to just provide even some comfort, it really says a lot about the mill, you know, itself. It gives you even more pride. Definitely, it definitely does. Hi guys, if anyone wants a blanket, you can come over and grab one. Super warm, fun colors. Fairbow Mill calls it spread the warmth. For every single blanket the company sells, one is donated. Thank you, thank you. An entirely new business model that was just launched in September. Every night, I get to tuck both of my two boys into bed to put them under a warm blanket and to know that four million kids in this country tonight will not have that same experience. It's enough to break your heart. And as a company that makes blankets, we felt like we were in a unique position to do something about that. Several donated blankets recently made their way to Youth Link in Minneapolis, which helps young people find long-term housing. Come on, let's get warm. The gifts were warmly received. This is gonna be my new favorite best friend. I'm telling you right now. I'm so grateful, thank y'all for real. But the blankets provide more than warmth. There's greater meaning. It means that they deserve something. They deserve something new, they deserve something meaningful, and they deserve to be loved and cared for. Ferris Bate has never needed love and care more. The 23-year-old did not have a place to stay when he moved from Georgia. Before you found this place here, did you have a place to stay? No, I don't have no place to stay. So where were you, where were you sleeping? Really, I was sleeping in the car. YouthLink helped him find medical care and a place to live. Though a blanket may seem small, Ferris is grateful. Oh, blanket, oh yeah, they, this was really helpful. The blanket, this is the only thing that we need because it's getting cold. The blanket's something you'll use? Oh yeah, the blanket has really been helpful. You see my blanket? It's really nice, you know. For Fairbow Mill, this 23rd step is not a temporary campaign. It's a permanent mission now woven into the company's fabric. So when we provide this blanket, is it going to solve homelessness? No. But is it going to provide comfort and warmth to a kid in need? The answer is yes. And we've been doing that for 157 years. We hope to be doing that for another 157 years from here on out. Oh, that one gave us all the warm fuzzies. All right, next. We want to bring you to a special place, a California ranch that is inspiring inner city kids. And it all started with a viral moment during one of our nation's most volatile times. Black Lives Matter protests were erupting daily during the spring of 2020. And it seems that people are more enraged by the destruction that happens than the loss of a life. So I said to myself, I'm gonna give them something to look at. That's when cameras captured 25-year-old Brianna Noble as she rode into a protest. You have to remember this image. She nobly rode atop her horse to downtown Oakland. And that image went viral. So I've tried since then to drive all of that attention to the work that we do here in our communities. As a child, Brianna loved horses and growing up as a competitive show jumper, she says there were many unspoken hurdles for equestrians of color. 
I remember being a little kid and wondering why, you know, I couldn't fit my helmet on and I didn't have the same hair as people and all of those things. And, you know, I'll never forget going to, to horse camp and, you know, meeting people that had actually never even seen a black person. Riding and caring for horses is also a costly barrier for kids in disadvantaged communities. Brianna worked as a vet tech to keep up with her expenses. It definitely made me want to create a space that was more welcoming where horses are what's paid attention to and not so much where you're from, how much money you make, or your skin color. We created this space here where we are not the minority. Our whole barn is filled with, you know, every sort of color there is. So I'm really proud and excited to be able to change that scene. Initially, Urban Cowgirl Ranch started as an eight-week riding program. That became unsustainable very, very quickly. We had a wait list of over a thousand people. And many of the kids eager to visit were from the inner city, where just 15 miles are a world away from here. Okay, come on in. We have kids and adults out here that have never seen a chicken in their lives and never seen a horse in their lives outside of TV. Let's see about your helmet, girlfriend. The ranch quickly grew into a nonprofit foundation with several Oakland area community groups using the property and its animals. As a living classroom, in addition to abundant beginnings, the ranch's permanent preschool. Okay, ready, let's go. Erica Lila is a mom of three-year-old Zoe. It's a baby chicken. They're outside every single day um, and just really being able to connect with the the land, being able to connect with themselves, and really appreciating the beauty of California. And for Brianna, the best teaching still comes straight from a horse's mouth. Horses are amazing. They're very honest creatures. They tell you a lot. Most people just can't hear them. Awesome. Yeah, good job. Whoa, 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 whoa. We've got a kid down. You are not a real cowboy or cowgirl until you have fallen off of a horse. I love working with kids. High five. I love working with community and I love facilitating interactions between humans and animals. That's what I'm here and I'm meant to do. To help offset the enormous cost of feeding all 20 horses and the many farm animals, the ranch now sustainably makes its own hydroponic feed, which churns out 700 pounds a day from this tiny shed. Brianna hopes that even a class, a day, or a week spent here will leave a child riding higher than they ever could have hoped. It sparks an interest in the environment. It sparks an interest in the outdoors. So a big part of what we want to do here is showing them that there's a world outside of here. There's a world outside the city. There's jobs. It's like a dream. Your beloved grandmother in the kitchen preparing family favorites. Where were you born? In Italia. Is that where you learned how to cook? Yeah. yeah. My nonna, my mother. But Nona Maria cooks for customers, not your cousins, at a restaurant in Staten Island. Aren't you supposed to be retired? Uh, I, I like to work. I like to do. <laughs> you like to work? I like to come every day. Grandma's in the kitchen is the specialty of the house at Enoteca Maria. It's, it's magic. Owner and proprietor, Joe Scaravella. I think the whole attraction with grandmothers, uh, it's when you're growing up, it's, that's like your safe space. Over more than a decade, Scaravella has assembled a mini UN of abuelas, boobies, and nanas. Home cooking cuisines from Asia to the Middle East. Every night, a split menu, Italian and food from someplace else. Something sort of magic happens every evening here. We're always anticipating what the different Nonas bring. I think I know plenty of grandmothers that aren't that good at cooking, but <laughs> but I've never seen one here. <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. You want to try this? Especially when Nona Maria is holding forth. You're a genius. Oh, yeah? Thank yeah. you. When I, I come inside, they, my face is smile. I feel so good. Coming up next, the powerful bond between humans and their animals. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. It's the best time of the morning. Time for oh, pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. Welcome back to The Boost. The bond between humans and animals is remarkable. And that's certainly true for one animal lover who adopted a rescue horse. And little did they know they would be starting a life-changing journey together. Coffee and carrots and a horse at my counter in my kitchen. It's probably the most zen therapy that I have found. Calm comes over me. I feel it's my happy place. Meet Amerigo, a 1,600-pound Percheron quarter horse mix who her owner, Charles Robbins Linford, calls his porch unicorn. Their story starts here, at their home in a beautiful forest in Washington State. Amerigo was a rescue horse, a Christmas gift from Charles's husband, Mark, five years ago. I drove up, I met her, and I wrote her one time and said, she's coming home. A little over a month later, Charles rode Amerigo for the last time. I did all the wrong things as a human being. She continued to tell me that she didn't want to be ridden, and she kept moving away from the mounting block uh, over and over and over again. Um, I forced the issue and finally got on her back and she did a few bucks and I ended up underneath her. And then she came down on my leg with her back hoof, crushing my leg. It was such a bad um, compound fracture. I was wearing rubber boots and it brought my bones out through the side of my boot and stuck them in the ground. So when rescue got here, they actually had to pull everything out of the mud. The leg injury causing multiple infections, needing countless rounds of antibiotics, six surgeries, and 52 days in the hospital. To cope, Charles shared his journey on Facebook. I'm really scared. I have no doubt this is what's necessary and that it's going to have to happen. Ten months after the accident, doctors said his leg had to go. On November 29, 2018, Charles awoke from his seventh surgery as an amputee. Kind of in recovery and doing really well, especially since I have this most amazing human next to me. Back at home, he had to face Amerigo and the scene of the accident every day. Even though I didn't blame her, I now had fear of her, and I never had fear of her. Amerigo reaching out to him first. She started standing by my window. She would just face in and just watch and look to the point where we started opening the window and she would stick her head inside. Then they would sit quietly together with morning coffee. I don't know what it is about her, but she's got a spirit that pulls you in really quick. To watch her move or to see her across the yard, there's just a glow about her. And before he knew it, Amerigo decided to come into the house. Well, hello. I was in the laundry room one day, folding laundry, and I hear the door swing open and hit the wall. With time, 
Charles and Amerigo put tragedy behind them, continuing to heal together, forming a magical bond. The accident was horrible and it took a while to get over, but what came from it and what it is now is so special. It's made me a better person. It's changed my life completely. I feel like I'm nicer. I feel like I have empathy for people. Charles says he rescued Amerigo to give her a better life. But what she gave him in return, despite that accident, is a love that will last a lifetime. I wanted to be able to take care of her. I mean, that was a huge part of my recovery too, is I had a responsibility to her. She wasn't gonna get rescued anymore. She's home. Oh, what an incredible relationship to witness. Coming up next, a special boost you do not want. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. It's the best time of the morning. Time for pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Todd Namas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. Welcome back. It's a time for a look at today's morning boost. The Detroit Red Wings have a new star. It's not any of the players on the ice. It's a little four-year-old kid, a little boy named George who did an amazing job of getting the crowd all revved up at a recent game. Take a look. Okay. <laughs> oh, they moved when the camera went off of it. forth on the jumbotron between George and whoever, the visiting uh, Vancouver Canuck fans, went on for another minute. Turns out it was George's first game, oh first Red Wings oh. game, and he's so popular with the fans, his mom said at least 100 people asked to take a picture with him. That's hilarious. She says that night, boo. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, you'll, they'll never forget. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's that so cute. Great. Always love to end the show on that note. And we're going to put another smile on your face when we see you back here tomorrow for the boost on Today All Day. Hello, and thanks for joining us for Consumer Confidential. I'm Vicki Wynn. Winter is officially here, and February, on average, is the snowiest month. For a lot of cities, this is the second coldest month of the year. For the next 25 minutes, we have your Winter Survival Guide. If you've ever had to walk or drive in snow, you know winter presents unique challenges. Snow and ice can make getting around tricky and downright dangerous. So do you know how to maneuver in these slippery conditions? We head back to driver's ed for some potentially life-saving lessons. Winter sports can be fun, and with the right equipment and precautions, you can avoid a trip to the emergency room. And don't spend a fortune cranking up the heat. A look at the hacks and tips to keep costs down while staying warm. Plus, despite the cold temps, you can still find hot deals. But first, some tools and appliances you should have around the house for the winter months. Freezing temperatures, snow and ice, all making for dangerous conditions during the winter. What are the most common injuries when winter comes around? 
And I'm in the emergency room in Colorado where we typically see a lot of winter injuries. And probably the biggest one are people slipping and falling on ice. In 2019 alone, fall-related injuries sent more than 8 million Americans to the emergency room. They'll hurt their backs, they'll hurt their heads, they'll hurt their shoulders. To avoid slipping and falling, make sure you have shoes with traction. If you have to brave the snow and ice, walk like a penguin. Slightly point your feet out and bend your knees, extend your arms out to your sides for balance, and take short steps or shuffle. Every year, snow shoveling causes thousands of injuries and about 100 deaths, most caused by heart attacks. Something as simple as shoveling snow can actually be fairly dangerous. It's a very, very strenuous workout. So even though they're feeling the symptoms, they're feeling chest pain, they're feeling shortness of breath, they have this goal of a driveway they want to clear, so they keep moving forward. Symptoms of a heart attack can include chest discomfort, shortness of breath, even nausea. Besides taking frequent breaks, push the snow instead of lifting it. If you must lift, only partially fill the shovel so it's lighter. And remember to use your legs, not your back. Also, consider using an ergonomic shovel like this one to avoid back injuries. Snow blowers can save you time and energy when clearing snow, but they can also cost you a trip to the hospital. On average, nearly 6,000 injuries result from snow blowers each year. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, most snow blower injuries happen when someone tries to clear snow from the discharge chute. First, stop the engine. Use a long stick, not your hands, to unclog the machine. Add fuel when the engine is cold and do it in a well-ventilated area outdoors. Remember, never run your snowblower in a shed or a garage because of carbon monoxide dangers. Known as the silent killer, every year carbon monoxide poisoning kills hundreds and sickens thousands more. A majority of the deaths occurring between November and February, when many use portable generators for warmth. Your home can contain other potential sources for carbon monoxide, including a fireplace if it's not well ventilated and working properly. That's why you want to make sure you have enough of these carbon monoxide detectors installed throughout your house. If you plan to use a space heater in your home, don't get burned. As the name suggests, give the heater some space. Keep it at least three feet away from anything flammable like this dog bed and always plug it directly into the wall, never a power strip. And if you do have to brave the elements, make sure you dress in layers and don't forget about your four-legged family members, especially if your dog has a short coat like Moose here, get him a sweater or a parka. And don't forget the booties. It's a fetching and functional look. Booties protect your dog's paws from the cold, salt, and other irritants. But try telling that to Moose. Good boy, it takes a little getting used to, huh? He kept the coat on, booties not so much. All right, joining us now with more on staying safe and healthy in this frigid weather, NBC News senior medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres, a favorite of our show. Hey, Dr. Torres, so good to see you. You're an ER doc in Colorado. You're no stranger to snowy weather. First, talk to us about what's the best way for us to dress in layers to stay, home, stay warm without overheating. Yeah, this is important because you want to make sure you stay warm, but if you get too warm, you can work with that as well. So you want to dress in three layers, basically. Number one, the base layer underneath. You want something that's synthetic. It's a synthetic material that can wick away the moisture, and that way it doesn't build up and start freezing your body. The middle layer should provide some insulation. We're talking sweaters, sweatshirt, fleece. All those work really well for this type of thing. And then the outdoor layer is the one you want to block the wind and the rain. Now, all of these layers should be loose. That'll help trap in warm air and they should be layers that you can take off and put back on depending on your body temperature because you don't want to sweat in the middle of the winter. But also don't forget socks, gloves, and hat, extremely important, Vicki. Yeah, walking my kids to school here in the Northeast, I know that when any part of your skin is exposed <laughs> to the cold, it can be so painful. How do you know when it's serious, like if you have frostbite? So one of the things you have to remember about frostbite is the areas that don't have much circulation are the ones that are going to be affected the most. And we have a little rhyme. It's fingers, nose, ears, and toes. Those are the ones that are going to get frostbitten first. So if you start getting pain, especially if it starts intensifying and you start getting that tingling pain, it starts getting worse. And especially if it starts going away, those are signs that you need to seek immediate medical attention. Now, if they're just tingling a little bit, you get back inside, you can put them in warm and not hot water. Think of the same water you give a baby a bath in and that can bring the feeling back but if that feeling gets super intense or does or suddenly goes away you need to be checked especially if you notice any blistering vicky oh fingers ears nose and toes got it all right what about hypothermia what are the warning signs and symptoms for that 
So hypothermia is when your body core temperature starts dropping and your body does what it can to build up the heat. So it's going to start shivering and that shivering is going to be light. We've all experienced that, but then it can start becoming uncontrollable. If that happens, you need to get inside. If you can't get inside, you need to wrap yourself with as many layers as possible, particularly get out of the wind. And if you're with somebody and they start getting confused, that's a medical emergency. You want to make sure they get treated as soon as possible. And last quick question, Dr. John, things happen we don't expect. So what should we do to prepare for a winter weather emergency when we're out there? So one of the things you want to prepare for is make sure you have a go bag, and that go bag has the things in it you need that you need to survive over the next couple of days. You know, things like important documents, extra set of house keys, some cash in case you need cash, mm -hmm. things you can eat and drink, water, non-perishable foods, have a flashlight, have a hand-cranked radio can definitely help. Take your medications, toiletries. If you have a cell phone, make sure you take your charger as well, and then a first aid kit, some extra blankets, warm clothing, hand warmers, those things that can help you survive for a couple of days because you never know when that's going to happen. And I know that you think about this often, but if you have pets, they're going to need a go bag too, Vicki. All right, two go bags. That was great advice. Always good to see you. Thank you, Dr. Torres. <laughs> you bet. Our winter survival guide continues. We'll show you how to stay warm without breaking the bank. Plus, we're heading to driving school for a look at how to safely maneuver on slick, icy, and snowy roads. Also, we'll have your safety guide to winter fun. From sledding to skiing, Consumer Confidential is coming right back. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day lighten your load every single morning. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Winter weather can cause dangerous driving conditions from slick and icy roads to ending up stuck in a ditch or a snowbank. That happened to me once. But a little preparation and know-how can help you literally steer your way out of a snowy mess. It's winter, and that can mean situations like this. Cars slipping and sliding all over the road and drivers stranded. In January, thousands of motorists spent 24 hours stuck on a stretch of I-95 in Virginia. Of course, the safest option is to stay off the roads when it's snowy and icy, but sometimes that's not possible. So I'm heading back to driver's ed to get a refresher on how to drive in the winter. Aliyah Borelli owns the AP Driving School in New Jersey and has 10 years of experience as a licensed instructor. Aliyah, what's the first thing we need to know before we hit the road in the winter? So the first thing you wanna do is know what kind of conditions you're driving into and winterize your car for those conditions. That means clear off the snow and check to ensure your tires are roadworthy. Use the penny trick. If you can see the top of Lincoln's head, that means your tread is worn and you may need new tires. And there are a few must have items to keep in your car. You want to definitely have some kind of blanket in a pack that can stay dry. Okay. We also have some snacks and some water, mm -hmm. a remote jump start that is a pack that can jump start your car if you need to jump and you don't need to have another car around. She also recommends a head-mounted flashlight. And this one I like because you can strap it onto your head in case you need to find, maybe if you drop your keys or if you need to change a tire. And she says always keep your tank at least half full in case you get stranded and need heat. With our winter supplies ready, it's time to get a driving lesson. When you are driving in icy conditions, what should you keep in mind? 
So the first thing you want to do is you want to reduce your speed. She says the speed limit is only for optimal conditions. In the winter, slow down and give yourself 150 feet to come to a full stop. You're increasing your reaction time and you're increasing the car's reaction time to different terrain. Mm -hmm. Borelli says the old rule of pumping your brakes no longer applies. Most cars today have anti-lock brake systems. The computer chip in the car is pumping your brakes for you. Let's say I hit an icy patch. Mm -hmm. What should I do? Should I hit the brakes? So you don't want to hit the brakes. You don't want to change that momentum that that car has already too quickly. You want to come off the accelerator and you want to regain control of the car. Let's say the back of my car starts to skid to the left. What do I do? What you want to do is first remain calm and come off of your accelerator. Then you want to adjust your steering wheel very gently to the left. You're okay. turning your steering wheel in the direction that the back of the car is skidding. She says by doing that, you're preventing the car from going into a spin. What if you do slide off the road and get stuck? Let's say we've run into a snowbank. What's the first thing we need to think about? So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you are visible. If you have some flares, now's the time to use them. Okay, make sure you read the instructions for how to light the flare and place the first one about eight paces away from your car. And the second one about 40 paces away. This is to give other cars enough distance to see you and react. No flares? Borelli says don't use hazard lights, which blink. Instead, use your parking lights. Here's the symbol. They'll keep your lights solid, which indicates to drivers you've come to a stop. It sounds strange, but keeping kitty litter in the car could save you. A little kitty litter right behind your tires might give you that extra traction that you need to get unstuck from your spot. You can also use your car's floor mat. Some easy tips and tools to help you out of an icy jam. Another tip, if it is foggy, avoid turning on your brights. The light will actually bounce off the fog and make it harder to see. Instead, slow down to increase your reaction time. Use your fog lights instead. Those beams actually point down and make it easier to see the road. As for tire chains or studded snow tires, experts say use those in mountainous or very snowy areas, but in most cases, they're not necessary. Some states even ban them, except under extreme conditions, because they can damage the roads. All right, well, don't let a day of fun end with a trip to the emergency room. Your safety checklist for winter sports from skiing to ice skating to sledding. How to tell if you're pushing your body too hard. And later, money matters. The deals you can discover during the winter months. Consumer Confidential returns after this short break. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop start, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. NBC News, streaming free now. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now.
months can mean a flurry of seasonal activities from hitting the slopes to grabbing the sleds, even lacing up your ice skates. While it's great to get your heart pumping and take advantage of the cold weather fun, make sure you brush up on the basics to avoid a trip to the emergency room. From Olympic athletes to everyday thrill seekers, winter sports take many to new heights, but not without the risk of serious injury. They're so enthralled by the sport that they forget about the injury risk. Dr. Wimi Diogi is an orthopedic surgeon who serves as director of sports medicine at MedStar Washington Hospital Center in Washington, D.C. Is this the busiest time of year for a doctor like yourself? For ski-related, uh, snowboard-related injuries, absolutely. In 2020, skiing resulted in more than 23,000 visits to the ER. Snowboarding, another 19,000. That's why safety experts say when it comes to taking the right precautions, there are just some things you just shouldn't let slide, like making sure you have the proper gear. What are some of the most common injuries? There's a large number of concussions, lacerations, fractures. It's really important to wear a helmet when you're, you're performing these sports. Before hitting the slopes, Dr. Duogi says, be honest about your skill level. Don't attempt a double black diamond if you've only experienced a bunny hill. And for those over age 40, he suggests scheduling a checkup with your doctor. You're gonna be doing activities that are gonna test your aerobic and anaerobic fitness. You need to get an expert's consultation to make sure that you're healthy before you jump out there. As ski and snowboard injuries reach their peak, keeping doctors busy, this time of year also has ski shops like this one in high demand. One of the keys to staying safe on the slopes, selecting the right equipment. The first hill to climb, dressing the part. Start by wearing several light and loose layers, followed by an outer layer that's wind and water resistant, like these snow bibs. Focus on fit. Lisa Ski NYC store manager Charlie Marone says find an adjustable helmet. Look for the knobs in the back. A lot of ski helmets, the newer ones have knobs that you can tighten it. Like a nice yeah. snug fit. Right. What's next? Next you want goggles. You want to make sure they fit your face right. You want to cover the sides as well. Let's get to the skis now. What do we need to know? You want to get the right size. Typically for beginners, we want to be under the chin because the shortest ski is easier to ski with. And then you want to look at the width here. Wider ski, easier to navigate as well. How about the boots? You want to get the right size, it's very important. You want to be a snug fit, you want to hug your foot. Because boots mold to your feet, Marone recommends buying new rather than used. When you do used boot, you don't know what foot's been in it, it wouldn't fit your foot correctly. Once you have your boots properly fitted, make sure an expert has set your bindings according to your height, weight, and ability so that the skis will release and prevent injury if you have a bad fall. And because so many winter activities combine high speed and slick surfaces, you can't skate around the risk of falling. But you can learn a safer way to take a tumble. If you lose your balance while ice skating, try to land on your behind or you'll have the best cushioning. And avoid putting your hands on the ice, especially at a crowded rink where another skater's blade could cut you. Sledding, a popular winter pastime for children, also sends thousands to the ER each year. Do you recommend wearing a helmet when kids are tubing or sledding? You can never go wrong wearing a helmet. For added protection, kids should also avoid sledding head first and stick to hills free of obstacles with plenty of room at the bottom. Avoid those that end in a street or a body of water. A guide to help you and your family enjoy the ride this winter. Looks fun, but before you take part in any winter sports, warm up cold muscles with light exercise or stretching, stay hydrated, and avoid overexerting yourself. Dr. Duogi says skiers tend to suffer knee injuries, while snowboarders often injure their internal organs like their kidneys, liver, and spleen. So take it easy and listen to your body. The doctor told us he can't even count the number of patients who got hurt on that one last run. All right, still to come, money matters from the best deals available during the winter months to cutting your home heating costs. Much more when Consumer Confidential returns. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Good morning, welcome to today. 
I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You might notice an increase in your home heating bill. The U.S. government has said the cost of heating your home could rise as much as 54% because of inflation. But there are some easy ways you can save money while still staying warm. Here with us is Amy Matthews. She's a general contractor and home improvement expert. Hey, Amy, what are some ways that we can cut down on our winter heating bills this season while still staying safe and cozy? Yes, absolutely. Well, my goal for people is for number one, them to understand their house better. And number two, to increase their comfort while decreasing their cost. And there's a lot of really easy ways that you can go about that without doing anything new or purchasing anything. And first of all, turn down the thermostat. I know it sounds really, really simple, but uh, the Department of Energy will say that they're going to assume you're going to bring your heating bill down by 1% uh, for each degree you turn the temperature down. Ooh. That ends up being a lot because if you turn your temperature down from seven to 10 degrees, either when you're sleeping or when you're away, that's an immediate savings on your energy bill by 10%, so that's awesome. Um, another thing that you wanna do is you not wanna heat rooms that you're not in. So let's okay. say uh, if it's a child's room during the day when they're not there or a playroom or an area that you're not using, close the vents to that space so you're not spending money on those kind of things. Um, there's a lot of other areas that we lose heat and that's gonna be through windows and doors mostly. So take a look around your house and check for leaks. See if, there, if you can feel any drafts by any windows or doors because there's easy fixes for those. Um, and then of course the ceiling fans are something that people think of using during the summer but during the winter if you reverse them and turn them on clockwise you're not getting a breeze you're actually pulling the air you're creating a, a convection so you're pulling the air up and then pushing it back down the sides of the room so that way you're taking that hot air that gets stuck at the top back down to where you feel it in the space which is great so there's a, there's, there's so, so many more I, yeah great tips those are all free easy to do you make a little air fryer out of your room with that ceiling fan amy thank you what Absolutely. about insulation how do we figure out if our homes are properly insulated well you want to take a look up in your attic for sure to get started because just like we put on a hat in the winter so we hold the heat in anywhere that we're losing air upstairs in our attic it, you're literally sending money through the roof so if you've got an attic take a peek up there see if your insulation needs to be uh, updated fixed if it's in uh, you know it gets it squishes over time um, and you want to be able to add insulation there so that you're not losing um, heat through the roof um, and then also check your 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 walls if you're in a really old home you may have shredded newspaper in your walls that is mm. your insulation and there are ways to fix and update that it's not a quick and easy and cheap fix but it is possible and if you're doing a renovation it's a really great time to consider where you're pulling uh, walls down where you're renovating and if you can add extra insulation at that time it's a good time to do it well that's good to think about and you can eyeball it in the attic at least and then quickly talk to us about Absolutely. the bottom line if you do this heating audit of your house and then you implement some of these tips how much do you think people can save well, you know, right off the bat, like I mentioned, turning down your thermostat is a big one. Getting a programmable mm -hmm. thermostat, that's going to save you a ton of money as well. If you add all these little different hacks in, I'm aiming for people to get about a 25% savings on wow. their heating bill. And it's totally doable. But you have to just walk through the house, possibly do an energy audit, to invest in one of mm -hmm. those is a great way to understand your house better and know where you're having uh, the leakage. So then you can pinpoint it because every house is totally different. Mm -hmm. But if you can add up to 25% to by, you know, like cutting down on all these different things, um, you're going to see a big savings and that money goes right back in your pocket. Love it. Thank you. Very important and to be deliberate about it. Amy Matthews, thank you. Good to have you. Thanks so much. Up next, where to find the deals during the winter months to look at what to buy and how to find those discounts. Consumer Confidential, we'll be right back. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
It might be cold outside, but there are still plenty of hot deals to get your hands on during the winter season. Supply chain issues and inflation have continued to affect the prices of everything from household items to groceries, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Meats, poultry, fish and eggs up 12.5%. Fruits and vegetables up 5%. Furniture and bedding jumped 13.8%. Women's dresses, jewelry, and watches costing you about 8% more. And if you've been to the store, you know it. Consumers having a much harder time finding deals in the marketplace. But luckily, we have shopping expert Trey Bodge with us today. She's going to break down everything you need to know about what to buy right now. Trey, so good to see you. Let's get right into it. After a really tough holiday season with shipping delays and price hikes, I think everyone was really ready for a clean slate in this new year. But it just feels like we can't catch a break. So what's your thought? How much longer are we going to see these high prices and supply chain issues? It's so hard to say, Vicki, just because we are still seeing these supply chain issues. Some of them are sorting out, but some of them aren't, especially anything with a chip in it. We are seeing delays mm. there, cars, electronics, things like that. I mean, the good news for consumers is that some of the merchandise is coming in and it's almost too much merchandise at this point. So we might find unexpected sales, which I always like to see. There's a degree of unpredictability. All right, well, this obviously hasn't been a standard year for those sales, but there are deals still out there. So what's your best advice for where shoppers can find those discounts and what should people be looking to buy now if they need these items? Sure. So winter apparel will be on clearance. So for instance, if your coat is old, you need a new one, or if your cat, your hat isn't warm enough, those are good things to look for. You should find clearance level deals there. And then there are certain periods in the month that I really like for saving. So for instance, we're going close to Valentine's Day. If you're looking for jewelry, we often see deals on jewelry or anything Valentine's Day themed. It's also good to wait until right after Valentine's Day and you get clearance level deals there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a Super Bowl coming up. The big game is a great time to invest in a new TV if you need that, or entertaining items like food, platters, glasses. And then we have President's Day. And you mentioned that big price increase on furniture and bedding. We should mm -hmm. see some deals mm -hmm. in that category. So that'll be exciting to see too. Oh, well, that's a great rundown for us. What are things that we want, might want to wait to buy right now? Sure. So I would wait on electronics because, again, we are seeing that chip shortage and they're not typically on sale in February anyway, aside from TVs. And so mm -hmm. I would wait if you can until June for that category. I would also wait on spring apparel. You may see some teaser deals, but it's not going to be anything substantial until later in the season. And then I would say toys, too, because they were just on sale in December. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to find good deals there. All right, kids, wait on the toys. When it comes to groceries, that's such a big part of all of our budgets, and it's not something that we can put off. Give us some simple strategies to use to stretch our money. Right, so you may need to go back to menu planning if you've left it behind. Look at the circulars that are in your mailbox. Go to deal sites to see if there are deals. I am seeing a lot of deals, especially on delivery services for food. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good way to strategize and save maybe 15% off, 20% off. That's a good way to go with your menu planning. And then buy in bulk when it makes sense, only on those items that you are sure that you will go through, especially if you have a bigger family. Smart shopping expert, Trey Bodge. Always good to see you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Vicki. And that is our time for now. For all of us at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. In the meantime, stay warm and safe. You scream, I, okay, I'm gonna stop right there because I know you know how it goes. We are here at New York City's legendary Lexington Candy Shop. Happens to be my neighborhood luncheonette. And there was a time when soda fountains and diners like this were all over New York City and all over the country. Whether it's a cone, a sundae, or mm, an ice cream float. I gotta tell you, there's nothing that brings back memories like places like these. Today, we're getting the scoop and diving into the history of America's beloved sweet shops. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. 
Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. It's no coincidence that here at the Lexington Candy Shop, one of New York City's most iconic soda fountains, they serve ice cream from the city of brotherly love. It's Bassett's, the oldest ice cream company in America. In fact, Philadelphia is home to many early ice cream innovations. And at the Franklin Fountain, we've got two brothers who have recreated a turn of the century fountain that celebrates Philadelphia's unique contribution to American ice cream history. We're very proud to be called Soda Jerks. In the heyday of soda fountains, being called a jerk was a good thing. A soda jerk is someone that jerks the handle on the soda fountain. We are the Burley Brothers. I'm Ryan. And I'm Eric Burley. Welcome. Come on in. Stepping into the Franklin Fountain is like time traveling to a bygone era. I've always felt a kinship for the turn of the century. It just feels like maybe I was there in a past life. The Burley family originally purchasing this historic property in 2002, but they weren't sure what to do with the storefront until inspiration struck. The building is really what inspired us uh, to do what we do here. It was built around 1899, and the original tin ceiling remains as well as the penny tile floor. So we really thought that a soda fountain kind of looked right for the space. There's certainly a sense of awe and wonder, sort of a, a transport through the time machine when you walk in the door, and that was really intentional. The brothers working for nearly two years to restore the space. It is not for the faint of heart to restore any old building. It's a labor of love. And frankly, we wouldn't have it any other way. It's part of the handmade nature of everything that we do here. The kitchen itself was a preservation element. Restoring the motor on the buttercream machine, fixing the belts. You know, the restoration of the building wasn't just the facade, but it's also the back of house spaces. They also embarked on a mission to recreate an authentic fountain experience. We took a number of road trips, in part to learn about the ice cream business, and then we would always pair soda fountain tours with those. So visiting places in the American South, going down to New Orleans, going to Savannah, seeing these old-fashioned soda fountain places, interviewing the soda jerks, the pharmacists, and really learning the culture of the soda fountain was a big part of our research. Today, while we may take the simple pleasure of eating an ice cream cone for granted, that wasn't always the case. I'm Sarah Lohman. I'm a food historian, author, and ice cream expert. Let's go back to when ice cream was a luxury, largely available to only the richest of Americans. We don't think of these as expensive ingredients today, but ice and sugar historically were very rare, and so only the wealthiest people could afford them. So it was usually made in the home, and by home I mean a large grand estate, by people who had servants, and then eventually people who owned other people. We're talking about the enslaved. So you also needed that literal manpower to make it. That all begins to change in the 19th century as technology and supplies change. Traditionally, European ice cream was made with a custard base that included eggs. But a simpler style emerged in Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia is the most important city to ice cream history, maybe Pennsylvania as a whole, because we had the invention of Philadelphia style ice cream by a black man. Augustus Jackson, a black man who was a White House chef working under multiple presidents, including Andrew Jackson, is credited with advancing a new type of ice cream and method. And he came up with an ice cream base that didn't use eggs, but was just as like creamy and luscious, but could be made with less ingredients, made quicker. And he supposedly had really, really tasty flavors too. A free man. He later moved back to his native Philadelphia to start his own business. 
So he made it and sold it, but then he also sold it to other ice cream shops too and became very famous and very wealthy for this new style of ice cream. Jackson's contributions made ice cream more widely available to more consumers. Philadelphia is also home to the oldest ice cream company in America, Bassett's. I'm Alex Bassett Strange, was my great, great, great grandfather that started this company all the way back in 1861. And we're proud to be here today. Bassett's was the first merchant to sign a lease in Philadelphia's historic Reading Terminal Market. And the family is still there serving up scoops today. Bassett's ice cream is a 16.5% butterfat ice cream, and it's what's called a Philadelphia style, which means that it's made without any egg yolk. Innovations to ice cream production, allowing more shops like Bassett's to open up in the early 1900s, and that ushered in a new type of meeting place where folks could socialize. And then we also had ice cream saloons. Now, the name there is key, saloon, yeah, means bar. And at this time, bars were places where only men could go, but ice cream saloons were one of the first public spaces that was socially acceptable for women to go to. So to have a public space was really meaningful to women. To have a space where you felt free, to have a space where you could safely flirt. Soda fountains and parlors became even more popular and almost necessary during the 1920s. When prohibition hits and we ban the sale of alcohol, then there's really a need for these public spaces for people to gather and socialize outside of the home. And as we move into the soda fountain era, we have a lot of creativity in adding ice cream to different flavors of soda and making these incredible concoctions and sundaes. If you were a soda jerk at the turn of the century, you were kind of a local celebrity. Today, the jerks in charge at Franklin Fountain are serving up nostalgia along with their vintage creations. It's one of our newer uh, soda syrups. It's uh, made with real watermelon fruit. Come over here to our 1905 soda fountain. Yeah. Mm, that is really good. Uh, you know, I don't want to mess with that flavor too much, so I'll just go with vanilla. Uh, vanilla ice cream just rounds everything out nice, plays nice at the playground. And the bean specks on the vanilla show that it's made with real vanilla, not vanillin. And that's an old Philadelphia tradition of having bean specks in their vanilla ice cream. Franklin Fountain's menu focuses on classics, but they also bring back long forgotten flavors. Summer hits like black walnut that tend to be kind of bitter, but mixed with enough sweetness can be really unique and good. Other flavors like pawpaws, which are our native fruit here in North America. While others misses. Uh, a flavor that kind of bombed here, uh, as an example, I'll tell you, it was orange pineapple. Like we really wanted to bring back orange pineapple as an ice cream, which was really popular at the turn of the century. But the Burleys aren't just passionate about their flavors they are working to keep a tasty tradition alive. Our business has really enabled the preservation of a couple of historic buildings here on the block. And we hope that the, the fountain and the institution of the soda fountain continues and you know, can be passed to succeeding generations of uh, soda jerks. Coming up, I visit a family owned ice cream shop in Harlem and get a sweet surprise. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We comes. begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We need to pull up one extra chair at the table. 
We feel like we're right there with you. Just ahead in this half hour, we're going to introduce you to Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Finish this sentence. Ice cream is... Love. Ice cream is not easy to make. <laughs> and see. We're up here in Harlem where the forecast is partly cloudy with a 100% chance of sprinkles. Why? Because we're outside Sugar Hill Creamery where they're bringing the community together one scoop at a time. Let's check it out. Hey guys, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. you. That's Nick and Petrushka Larson, husband and wife, and parents to Isla, Zadie, and Nico. So let's talk ice cream. They're also the owners of Harlem's Sugar Hill Creamery, which the couple opened in their beloved neighborhood in 2017. We're gonna give you the scoop, Al. Bam! For the couple, that bam moment came after meeting up with friends in DC for some premium scoops. We had small batch delicious ice cream, and that is when it hit us that this was not an experience that we could have in our own neighborhood. The realization that they couldn't do this in Harlem was the beginning of their sweet journey. When Nick and I started dating, he always said he wanted to own a food establishment of some sort. And then this, you know, moment in life kind of presented the opportunity. Patricia oversees the shop's marketing and business, while Nick, well, he develops their artisanal flavors, often looking to the neighborhood for inspiration. The great thing about having a small shop, you see in real time, oh yeah, they don't like this, <laughs> right? And, and our, you know, and our friends from Harlem, they are not shy to be like, yo, no, no, this is no yeah. good. <laughs> so your flavors are nods to Harlem. Not to Harlem, not to our respective cultures as well. So my, I'm black, African American, and from the Caribbean. And Nick is from the Midwest and was raised on a farm. We're channeling Harlem, we're channeling childhood memories, we're channeling the way that we were raised, what we were eating. I think this is the best uh, example of channeling our neighborhood. So we have a, a, a flavor called Cafe Tuba. And where the first location is, it's like a few blocks from Little Senegal. The flavor Cafe Tuba uses coffee from Senegal. We incorporate peanut brittle and the lean pepper brownies. Mm. So it's a bit of a twist on a classic, which we like to say we make, you know, twists on classics and then all their flavors that you wouldn't expect. Many features of the scoop shop pay homage to Harlem, starting with the name. Where we're sitting right now is a neighborhood that is adjacent to Sugar Hill. Sugar Hill is a neighborhood in Harlem that at the turn of the 20th century was the, the place where a, upwardly mobile black people resided and, and came to, right? It was also the home of the Harlem Renaissance too. Many artists, activists were living here. You know, you talk about the history and homages to this neighborhood. Uh, was there some thoughts about the, that historic uh, ice cream shop, Bumford's? Yes. Just before opening Sugar Hill, Patrushka learned about an iconic Harlem institution, Tomford's small group of octogenarian Harlemites that just happened to be at this conference and they were like, hey, she's opening an Abbey Ice Cream shop. This is crazy. And you're like, oh my gosh, It'll, it's like Tom Ford. Tom Ford was in business from 1903 to 1983, located in the heart of Harlem at 125th and St. Nicholas. Unlike many early soda fountains, it catered to black patrons, providing much more than food and ice cream. It was the place that people went after, you know, church uh, on a date. And we didn't know about it when we decided to open the shop, but after we learned about it, before we opened the shop, we definitely channeled the, the history and spirit of that place here. Sugar Hill's motto, the sweet life is a love affair between community and food. And it also has a historical meaning. The sweet life is also, you know, a reference to the great migration. You know, when people moved to Sugar Hill, they were looking for the sweet life. We wanted to give our neighbors a little bit of sweet life as well, right? Nick and Petrushka are hopeful that their spot will become the place for making family memories down the line. Later down the line is to hear stories like people talking about Tom Ford's that are talking about what, you know, what we meant to them, right? To be a place where somebody could come in and say, my parents met here. What an honor. And I, think, I don't think that we take our role as, you know, the people who created this company 
lightly, like it is such an honor to be able to serve our neighbors and to also be a place that they continue to come back to. I think that a lot of us have really fond memories of going with our family um, and having ice cream on a hot summer day or like rolling past a rural ice cream stand and it's just like packed with little league kids or when you live in a city you've got your local ice cream place that you can walk to and the whole neighborhood is there. And as for the future of Sugar Hill Creamery? With, with three kids, uh, Nick, are, are you hoping that out of those three, one of them is going to carry on the tradition? It's a tricky question. Yes, I would, but you know, I'm not going to pressure them. At the very least, we need them to work here during exactly. high school. Exactly. Okay? Well, well, well. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? <laughs> You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love that too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. It's the best time of the morning. Time for our pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. It's time for Sunday School. Say amen, say hallelujah. <laughs> amen! Hallelujah! <laughs> my Sunday School teachers at Harlem Sugar Hill Creamery kicked off my lesson with a special treat, a one-of-a-kind flavor made just for me. You should learn to scoop with your uh, own... My own flavor. Your own flavor. My own flavor. Yeah. Wow. All of the ice cream served at Sugar Hill Creamery is small batch, each flavor taking two days from start to finish. The difference between a small batch and large batch is one is a freezer. These machines allow more experimentation with mix-ins. The reason why it's homemade and why it's better to use a small batch, for example, is you have freedom to do whatever the hell you want. You're not beholden to what can fit into an automated machine that, like, for example, can't put a particular like sauce in it because it'll be too thick or you know jam something you know things like that and now back to Sunday school so what's my flavor so your flavor so we've heard around the way uh -huh. that you uh, that you're a friend you're a fan of cookies and cream I am also you like sweet potato pie so I do okay so this is a combination and pecans. Of, well right? the pecan element is yeah. a part of the sweet potato pie but, but yeah. yes I can tell you guys are married <laughs> For my signature flavor, Nick started with a sweet cream base, then adding Nilla wafers. Blended in, made a uh, graham cracker pie crust or pecan, Ooh. Uh, roast sweet potatoes, cook it uh, down with basically it's a holiday IPA, mm -hmm. and uh, poured the beer in it, blended it up, and then made it like a custard with, uh, with eggs. Wow. A lot goes into that. A lot goes into it. And a lot goes into forming the perfect scoop. But picture perfect scoops wouldn't be the same without one very important invention. The ice cream scoop was invented by a black man. Alfred Crawley holds a patent for the ice cream mold and disher. And that's the scoop that's like, it has a little handle that you squeeze and the thing scrapes and the ice cream plops out. 
Uh, but he invented that in 1897 and sort of revolutionized ice cream culture. So the side here is to form it, the tip is to like kind of scrape it, right? So if you're like just learning, the best way is just a little bit at the top, like that. Sides and boom. And you, you form it with the side. Oh, so you're forming the ball. The ball, the yeah, exactly. All right, voila. Ta da! Right. So the cup, now we'll get a little rinse. A rinse. Okay, so you, you start. You can well, also uh, grab out the sides there too because oh, it's a little, little softer. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a sad yeah. scoop. No, 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 look, now good. you're going to form oh, it. Oh, now it's forming. Now you're, mm -hmm. now it's forming. Oh, yep, look, at, look that. at that. Now, oh, See? hey, now we're talking. There it is. Wow. There it is. Good. Hey, now. All right, let's taste. All oh, right. Time to taste. The Al Roker. Cheers. Well, actually. Oh, we also have a special name for it. Oh, what's that? It's uh, your neck of the woods. Oh, I like it. it. <laughs> wow. And this, this is, is great. Yeah. Like all Sugar Hill flavors, there's an art to naming the ice cream. For example, their best-selling blueberry cheesecake, well, it's named for Petrushka. So this is uh, named after my wife, who's the chairperson of the board. She's the boss. This is the boss flavor. You're smart man. <laughs> this is the this is the chief. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Mm. My work here is done. Coming up, a whimsical creamery in Las Vegas known for its colorful creations. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you, too. <laughs> I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You know the old saying, what happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas, especially when it comes to a hot spot that's known for creating really cool desserts, Creamberry. These folks are recreating the ice cream parlor experience for a whole new generation of ice cream fans. And whether that's in person or via social media posts. Selfie anyone? I've seen some kids who can kill the burrito by themselves. Most adults, it's funny, they would share. <laughs> in Las Vegas, a few miles off the strip, is the flashy, fabulous, and insta-famous ice cream shop Creamberry, opened in 2016 by husband and wife team Danny and Rosalina C, hoping to create a one-stop dessert cafe. We set on a mission to bring in a wide variety of crazy, innovative desserts into one place. For Danny, it was a dream come true. I've always had a sweet tooth when I was younger, and I've always loved ice cream. Rosalina, not so much right away. She favored traditional icy desserts from her native Indonesia, not American ice cream. We love sweet stuff, but we don't uh, really love like ice cream, ice cream, but more to like shave ice. I said, why don't we bring our Indonesia dessert to our menu? And just like that, Creamberry started offering shaved ice. So we have the secret ingredients, which is the sauce, the red one, that make it very good with the condensed milk, with everything fruit on top for the shaved ice, and then it's a good combination. Danny's focus was on the full menu, 
adding unique treats from around the world to Creamberry, desserts like Thai rolled ice cream and Filipino hala halo. Recognizing the power of social media, Rosalina began posting photos and videos of their decadent creations to Instagram and then later to TikTok. It's a practice that keeps modern ice cream parlors relevant, according to food historian Sarah Lohman. I think social media is important because, I mean, there's, there's people out there who are following ice cream places that maybe, maybe they'll go to, maybe they'll never go to, but it's like the visual appeal. Most people who buy cookbooks don't actually cook the recipes. It's like they flip through the pages to go on a journey. I think like social media and like ice cream social media lets us do that as well. One of their most eye-catching treats, the legendary cotton candy burrito, a social media and IRL favorite. Ooh, another one, maybe, ooh, look at this, the giant burrito. Oh, the birthday burrito. Yeah, the birthday burrito. I think that should be perfect for today. Hashtag genius. The cotton candy burrito proves that something savory can be the sweetest inspiration. I was having Mexican dinner one night and uh, of course eating burritos and tacos. That's where it gave me the idea, hey, why don't I try to experiment this into a dessert? And long behold, it actually worked. Rosalina was immediately impressed. I was like, man, that's a good idea. Creamberry was one of the first shops in the U.S. to offer the viral treat, but it took a few tries to perfect. As everybody knows, cotton candy is very fragile, and any type of a moisture or it will just ruin the cotton candy. The first step in the process isn't posted on social media. Spinning of the cotton candy is one of our trade secrets for our cotton candy burrito. So we, we usually spin it in the back in the kitchen. The couple's young sons also deserve a shout out for their love of cotton candy and its impact on their business. Our kids love cotton candy, so that's why that's the first time that we bring the cotton candy to our shop. So what's more important, how their desserts look or how they taste? Both. Both. <laughs> if customers come in and they're visually attracted to it and they try it and it doesn't taste good, they're not going to come back yeah. and, and get the same dessert. So we eat with our eyes, right? So there's always been effort and consideration to the appearance of food, but the more photographs we can take and the wider they get spread, like with the spread of Instagram and social media, I think there's been even more of a sort of focus on how our food looks on camera. And ice cream is sort of the perfect medium for that. Like you can have a really wild color. You can have this like a really elaborate sundae, or you can have something that's just like really bold and beautiful. And luckily, because it's ice cream, it all still tastes good while looking good at the same time. Other Insta and TikTok worthy finds include their made to order ice cream tacos and wild milkshakes. For Rosalina, the more social interaction, the better. We really love to see the comments, how many likes we got, and then, you know, like a lot of people repost it too. And those comments, good and bad, help the duo refine their creations. Sometimes people say, oh, don't put too much sprinkle candy or whatever it is. And then sometimes we take it like, oh yeah, maybe not too much, it's maybe only a little bit. Yeah, it's very helpful for us yes. as well because then at least we can adjust what, what is necessary and to accommodate the customers. The virtual shares are sweet, but it's even sweeter when followers from around the world get to try Creamberry. We can never get enough of seeing all the smiles when the customers get their orders. Just the, the facial expression that they give us. In an era when we're bombarded with options, the simple joy of heading out for ice cream has withstood the test of time. I think that ice cream shops, spaces, parlors, ice creameries have survived because they've always fulfilled that community space and that family space. It's something that everybody can come together around. And families behind the counter will keep scooping up sweet memories for years to come. Good Wednesday morning, the Michigan State community coming together overnight. Powerful tributes to the victims and the search for answers this morning. It's February 15th. This